I'm sorry. There we go. 2018. 2018. Welcome to High Rollers, the D and D show here on New York's Cast Twitch. I am a very sleepy Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me we have Chris Trot, Katie, Hello, Tom Hazel, Hello, and Kim Ricards. Why did I not get a last name? I was the only one. Morrison. <laughs> Morrison. <laughs> Morrison. <laughs> Son of Morris. I don't know. Um, I welcome know. back. Couple of quick things. It's 2018. That's the first one. <laughs> <laughs> We're Fucking back. Yeah. He's still writing it wrong. If you've been like, when is High Rollers back? Ignoring no. all the tweets that Kim's been putting out. You uh, can't see this. Th th you can't see this. Because you're not here. But <laughs> you're it's the going to be more. <laughs> <laughs> we're back every week, basically. Like We're back properly now. Please so. do not tweet anymore about when we're back. <laughs> yeah, we're all back. Week, we're all back. week I tweeted and I still got tweets back going, when's High Rollers back? They just don't listen to you, Kim. They don't. It's just, it's just you. They don't listen to Kate either. <laughs> Second thing. That's why you have the Twitter account. <laughs> Kawaii Destiny. Trot, you can have a next one. Second thing. Kawaii merch Destiny. store. I did this. Oh, no, I did not catch um, that. No, at all. it's fine. Audience will. Uh, merch. So we know that there's been some problems with merch. Please do on the store, on Yogscar store, there is a customer services email. Please email that. Um, yeah. Make sure you, you tweet at Youngscast and let them know. Obviously, we don't fulfill the yeah. orders. We don't have anything to do with that. That is so, one thing. Like We get a lot of tweets asking about the merch, but you're better to go through Youngscast yes. directly because we don't know yeah. any more than you guys do. Basically, so if, you, go to that. if you email customer services, it will go to Merch Mike. Mike handles all of that. He'll be able to give you an update. If you tweet at Youngscast, it will go to Daff. Yeah. And Daph will go and speak to Mike and get that sort And of also, a big thank you to any of you who bought our merch. At the end of last year, we released so much of it. And we saw so much appearing as Christmas presents yeah, for people and everything. Awesome. And it was amazing. We got so like the new, so we got new mugs. We got the Dead Reckoning dice. We've got a new shirt. We've got yeah. the poster. The film is just really great. Thank you very much for buying it all. We'll hopefully have some new stuff coming um, at some point soon in the new year as well. You don't get your stuff. I mean, I'm pretty good with clay. I could probably make some dice. Just let me know. I could probably sew a t-shirt. You would choke on them. Yeah, oh, yeah they'd be up his nose. Yeah. You, would you make the dice out of clay? Yeah. Okay. That's my go-to. <laughs> like <laughs> our ancestors <laughs> used to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next thing is a completely selfish plug, but I have just started a brand new DMing 101, like a D helping people DM for the first time series on my channel, Tabletop Weekly. How on earth would we find it? It's oh, Tabletop okay. Weekly on YouTube. <laughs> Where? YouTube.com forward slash Tabletop Weekly, Chris Trout. Thank you. Uh, it's called DM 101. It's an ongoing series. There's going to be loads what more. What if I want to know how to be a DM? It, that's the perfect series for you. <laughs> what if I don't it have 40 off minutes of time? That, that was too bad. <laughs> It's, it's like 38 it's, minutes. <laughs> it's 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes. Well, there you go. Um, but there's going to be more to come. This is just the basics, and the, we're going to cover loads of different topics as we go. Um, so you can please do go and check that out. That's hopefully going to be a big thing for me. I quite like my intro as well. I bought a whiteboard for this show. I and saw it. Damn well I saw I'll your use intro. it. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing, it's okay. the tickets have already sold out, <laughs> but I will be at something called City of Games, which is happening here in Bristol in February. I believe it's 8th to the 10th. Um, it is a little uh, indie board gaming con, uh, which is going on here in Bristol. Um, I'm going to be running a live D&D game for uh, a YouTube group called No Pun Included. Um, if you've got ticket to the show, just pop along and just let me know that. Okay. Uh, yes, I think like, I can get you guys tickets if you want to come. Nice. Yes. When is it? Eighth, uh, the ninth, the, the no, eighth to the tenth of February. I got think. The dentist, whole time. Wow, well, whole time. <laughs> just getting all of them replaced with one giant tooth. No, big no, gone. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm actually not here. Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's it for the announcements. I'm going to be late and buzzard. Late and buzzard. Mm. I've just got some friends who are moving to late and buzzard. Mm. Re pointless. Um, <laughs> irrelevant. Irrelevant. 
Recap. The last time that we all played Dungeons and Dragons that was canonical, not including the Christmas special, which was very a, fun. Okay, super brief high rollers summary. Oh no. Don't I mean, well, yeah, there's a lot of people that. Okay, right. Hi, new viewers for the new year. So, well, there's, there are more of you. There's today. this bunch of heroes, right? And they're <laughs> in a world, and that world's called Iraq. And 40. Arak. Arak with an A. 46 years ago, there was this big ma magical cataclysm that rained loads of destruction down with these giant shards. Thank you, Steve, for my whiteboards and my excellent handwriting there. <laughs> um, it rained down destruction on the world, um, and kind of like civilizations had to restart. Uh, it's, that's happened, and now the heroes have been uh, going through the adventures, and they've been dealing with a group called the Broken Sky, which is this kind of terrorist group that's working for a cloud giant princess who is trying to take over. We're in a, a rack with a, and there's a terrorist group. <laughs> a, a cloud giant group yeah. that are trying to undermine the government. Look, it's fine. And what are they called? I s the Broken Sky. <laughs> Don't start. Uh, the characters have also had their own little plots. They've had different things that have been going on. Elora's parents, which is Katie's characters, were briefly turned into werewolves. They're fine. They got better. Uh, <laughs> Reynard has a cool uncle that's like Ron Swanson. He's they nicer. found him. He's a cool dude. He's, he's nicer cool. than Reynard. Yeah, he's way cooler as well. Okay. Um, Juto was a slave, and she wanted to kill a dragonborn, <laughs> and then she found out that that dragonborn wasn't the dragonborn she thought it was, but she still wants to kill the original dragonborn, which will kind of probably happen in the future. Uh, and she likes the dragon one she thought was bad and is good. This is Who's so also confusing. the previous... <laughs> you asked me to do it on the car! I, I the did. The previous champion of the city, the main city of this place. Well remembered. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then Cam, which is the next storyline is going to be focused on Trot's character, Cam. You tuned in the right time. Yeah. This is the best arc. This is the, sure. <laughs> Uh, he was, he's kind of a traveling fellow, like a musician and trickster and prankster. Awesome. And he's part of a, a family called the Buckland family, um, who were basically working for a lord called uh, Lord Blackhearth in a, in a city called Greybell. And they were kind of like his performers and things like that. And he was paying them to, to do stuff. Yep. And something happened in the city that caused Cam to have to flee it. Yep. And uh, over time, the party <laughs> found out. Don't you write this down. Reynard doesn't know this. He's not writing anything. Uh, He's got two pages of notes for the entire campaign. campaign. <laughs> I, I literally got like a little addendum of everything addendum. I learned about Cam Buckland. There you go. Like, so for the viewers at home... Page turned down and everything. Oh. Cam Buckland uh, thought he had murdered his childhood friend. <laughs> Turns out he hadn't. It was actually this lord and his memory had kind of gotten confused by the kind Sweet. of tragic incidents. Yeah. yeah, that was revealed. Like, yeah. Jeez. What? Yep. That was literally... Right. <laughs> I know. DMing. Welcome. Um, welcome to High Rollers. Um, and they basically is become, they've learned that this Lord Blackhearth is a vampire, and that's as much as they know. Um, and in the last, very last episode, Reynard's been reunited with his uncle. They've helped stop uh, some sort of crazy fey magic from like creating these abnormally large creatures that were ransacking towns. Um, and they're making their way back. And on the way back, Cam Buckland received a vision from his god, who spoke to him and told him that he needs to go back to Greybell, this city that he originally fled, because a real terrible darkness, a real terrible evil has taken root. Um, and she referred to it as a plague, a plague on life. Um, and that I it said, had to be but we've got with. all this stuff going on with the Broken Sky, and she this said, terrorist organization in Iraq. And she explained it that whilst Falania and the Broken Sky are like the storm bringing destruction, um, they are a passing disaster. What is happening in Greybell is a slow death, a, a, a corrupting plague that will um, take over uh, in cool. the long term. And is a greater evil uh, at this pressing yeah, time. The top of a dice bag looks like an anus. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't, but I do now. Thanks oh, nice. for bringing that Hat Films comedy, Chris Trump. <laughs> anus. Should, should we do a quick who's your you, character? Yeah, you guys do that because I've talked, so I've done. Go. I'm Cam Buckland, the person that Mark was just talking about. Uh, I'm a traveller, uh, that's what I look like. I am mostly a cleric, and I'm really good at it. Uh, but he's a, a little tiny bit, bit of a, he's like a little slither of a rogue. I use daggers, I have this ability because in Mark's world, with the, all these shards and stuff, there's uh, the ability of being a light born, so born with the abilities of light. Uh, so that means when I go down, I get back up with, and my hair glows. Well, when, you, when, you, when he is killed, uh, he kind of briefly has a surge of life to bring him back. Yeah. When he gets not I'm the best. Um, the the visuals the of me, there. just think of the tangled. Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider meets John. Um, meets Jack, Jack Sparrow. Meets the glowing hair yeah. of, of Goku. Of no, Rapunzel. Of Rapunzel. <laughs> <laughs> I'd fucking vote Goku. Alright, fine. Okay. So, right, Casey, go. 
I am playing Elora Galanadel. She is a Circle of the Moon Druid. She's OP as heck. Um, yeah. What does the Circle of the Moon Druid mean? Uh, so she D &D. can um, basically, there's two different types of Druid, Circle of the Land, Circle of the Moon. Circle of the Moon is very much <clears> focused <throat> on more on her wild shape abilities, so transforming into animals. So I can do that twice per short rest or once turn into an elemental per short rest. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, she also has spells. She's got a lot of different different things she can do. Um, she is a member of royalty. She's the princess of the Spire of the Moon, which is one of the elven spires. And what are you doing? He's pointing at his anus. Oh, for fuck's sake. So, I'm taking this away. Yeah, <laughs> confiscating. Confiscating. Um, drama teacher. <laughs> I yeah, am wearing so the cardigan. The drama teacher cardigan. I called it a cardigan and he said, give it its full title, please. So it's the <laughs> drama teacher drama cardigan. Teacher card. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's Alora. She's, uh, she's a lovely little yeah, little elf. And yeah. Oh, my two Please. golden boys. Here. Okay. Uh, I am Reynard Farrowhorn, human. Yeah, yeah, How, no, uh, well. Reynard Farrowhorn. No one cares. Oh, okay. You, you go. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> that's Carry it. So I'm you're allowed. Unearthed Arcana uh, Ranger, Kiki, Kiki, human, please. and I look like that guy. Um, Mumble and me tuna. I am an. Am I new? Am I still new, boy? Yeah. You're, I mean, you're, you're the most recent addition. <laughs> you most you took over from uh, Matt's uh, drow character trailer. Do you have notes yes. when Tom took over? When Tom started the campaign. Do you yeah. have notes on the that? The exact date. Probably. <laughs> Find yeah. it out but for us. That pompous prick. But, uh... Uh, yeah, and I, um, I guess I've just finished finding my uncle. So yeah. now I'm just... And you're kind of your ranger type, you're more of a hunter. You're not necessarily a yeah. magical kind of woodsy guy. You're more like really good with the crossbow. Yeah, I've got my uh, magical crossbow that shoots thunder. Yes. <laughs> and uh, a dancing scimitar. Yes. So I'm pretty capable. Yeah. He's actually he's, he's actually combat. pretty good. I'm pretty capable. <laughs> probably pretty the most good. combat Sword capable. <laughs> no, I think well, and Alora. Actually, and Juto. Everyone except Cam, really. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone really. Uh, Juto, Kim. That's your name. <laughs> um, I'm Juto, who is a tiefling monk. Uh, think darkness, no parents, you're pretty much there. Um, she pretty much doesn't understand anything outside of her rather sheltered life. As a slave. As a and slave. And a monk. And a monk. Yeah. Um, so traveling around with these bunch of butts has been pretty enlightening. Um, she has a chinchilla. Called Cam. You did, you gave it away. It's with Guan Yin. I haven't given it away. You've left it in the care of a master monk of 20th level. I love yeah. exactly. how that's a, a big part plane. of your character is this chinchilla. In a different plane of existence. Yeah, yeah. it's an arboreal. And, problem. Um, <laughs> Were you checking if the chinchilla yeah. was still alive? <laughs> Guan Yin would not kill my chinchilla. I don't, I don't check. <laughs> He's already killed my first chinchilla. I did. Um, and the um, stances that I, I, I use this new system that Mark has homebrewed, uh, which is the Elemental Monk system, which is pretty cool. If you've seen Avatar The Last Airbender, it's basically that. Changes stances, <laughs> yeah. different elements. So you can stuff. go into like fire stances, kind of based on like Shaolin Kung Fu and stuff like that with animal forms. Um, <clears throat> right, that's enough of that. Uh, let us get into the game. If you're not familiar with D&D and things like that, don't worry, you will pick it up. We kind of explain a lot of things as we go. It's generally, if the players want to do something, I'll tell them to roll a dice. They'll add a bonus, which you don't really need to know about, and I tell them whether they succeed or not. That's basically the principle of the game. Um, and the rest of it is storytelling. Why was your video 30 minutes long? What? Why was your video 30 minutes long? Because there's a lot more to <laughs> if you want to run it yourself. For people watching, that's all they need to know, all right? Yeah. God, yes, just sir. crush my dreams. Don't crush your dreams, sir. Fuck right, that's it. So, Disadvantage for the oh first no. four rolls now. YouTube Trouble. trips him up and then Tom just pisses on him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Demonetization. Right, let's get on with the game. Right, Trouble people left are watching on the 12th for the March. Yeah, but then he didn't, but Raynor didn't come in straight away. So okay. you don't actually have notes anyway. on when Tom started. Right. Well, he kind of came in and then Trellamar left and then he came back. Yeah. So, there you go. You are currently all in the small uh, village of Rootswell. Uh, a, a kind of rustic, earthy, lumberjacky kind of town um, on the edge of uh, the first wood, one of the oldest woods um, on the continent. Um, you've been there uh, after rescuing Felix Fairhorn, Reynard's uncle, um, and things have been making the progress. I believe you had made plans um, just before we went on Christmas break 
that you were going to travel to Greybell after Cam basically revealed that he had to go there, that he was being sent there by a He didn't actually tell us. He I think he told tell, Reynard. He told Reynard, yes. I think, but he didn't tell us. Oh, we went outside, yeah. didn't we? Yeah. So didn't really give you a lot of information. No, the, no. I think the last thing was you, that you told Reynard that Avandra said you had to go to Greybell and you had an important mission. And it is, is potentially more grave than yes. the whole Broken situation. Sky. You left Grunker in the tub. Yeah, uh, that's yeah true. I missed a real hint. Grunker is a <laughs> half <awful> companion. <laughs> yes, you did. So, um, and this kind of, yeah, you've been kind of, you, you've been sort of wanted guests, you've helped the town out with this kind of, these dire animal problems and things like that, um, and currently you are just resting and recuperating. Um, what would you like to do? We've still got the cause of the... The oh, ever seed, yes, bag yes, of holding. yes, the ever seed. This kind of ancient fey relic is okay. currently sitting in your bag of holding. So I think our original Nobody plan was to go back to Talos Valve with it. Um, but. yes, but we have other things. But as long as it's in there, as long as we don't think about it, then it mm -hmm. can't come out. Why did I go outside right. with Reynard on his own? You were outside and Reynard came out to yeah, follow you. You were kind of being mysterious and he noticed solo. that you weren't eating grapes. Yep. You weren't eating grapes, so we all freaked weird. out. I wasn't eating grapes, you're right. Yeah. That's, that's why she wrote that down. That's why I wrote that down. Last thing I've got is... It was important. Cam doesn't want grapes, exclamation mark, arrow, <laughs> vampires. <laughs> I mean, it's an accurate portrayal of what happened. Um, so yeah. So I'm outside with Reynard. Yes. I'm like, oh, I should probably... Probably tell the other two. It's very early morning as well. This was literally all happening. Basically, you'd woken up, you'd had breakfast, and then this was all. Yeah, because Felix is still. Felix is still he's enjoying his yeah. breakfast food. Yeah. yeah, teaching us the ways of breakfast. He's food. enjoying his breakfast foods. There he is! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I love. Oh, I need to get into my Felix Farrowhorn <laughs> persona. What do you think it's about so bacon? Quick, though. Bacon is a wonderful thing. <laughs> it is the greatest of all of mankind's foods. It is something the elves don't understand. Man, Ron's one's Laura, a pants, you don't you understand bacon? Too uh, many damn vegetarian elves. I'm not a vegetarian. It seems fairly simple. You're one of the good ones. Good. He just looks at you. Yay! He's good. shoveling eggs and bacon in his mouth. Occasionally quail wipes eggs. his moustache. Quail eggs. Oh yeah, the quail eggs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Memories. <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> the so that's thing. happening. <laughs> that's happening. Yeah, these two are having an emotional moment outside. <laughs> you and me just We're just <laughs> eating breakfast, so. I think we've pretty much ended it on you saying we need to head to Greybell, and you didn't really tell me much, and I was just saying. I don't think like, you told him, yeah. That we Reynard, to help. I think you should tell him exactly everything I just said. Yeah. I think it's on you to tell them. While I have a lot of preparation to do, that's on you. Right. I'm going to walk just around the side of the building. <laughs> he like walks around, you watch him, leave around the corner. I, I can't remember what you told me. Um, <laughs> thanks, I don't Rob. think you told him much. <laughs> yeah, you did. didn't. You were really mysterious you and grumpy. Really, yeah. yeah. Classic Cam, trying to pretend it wasn't I'll, a problem. I'll come back in and nice. just say to everyone, uh, I think you all noticed Cam not eating his grapes. Yeah. Yes, I think something's <laughs> happened. Uh, you didn't really... Give me too much information, as I recall. <laughs> Feels like it's been months. <laughs> I feel like I was out there for at least two months. <laughs> and some weird, weird stuff moments. happened in the middle. Yeah. That was like no, not weird, canon. Weird. Transported to another realm. No, you met some weird drow. <laughs> a few moments. You're in a sexy elf costume. Drow, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> you can oh make that. God. That could be your dream. <laughs> Christmas is coming back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, mm. um, <laughs> what did What did he tell you, Reynard? Uh, he he told me about Greybell. Yeah, he did say that he wanted to. Well, that we should go there. I don't know. Greybell is where we first met. It is. What happened there? Well, um, uh, well, I can tell you that when you guys left, um, you all had your own personal reasons. Um, the town was. It's a. It's probably the second largest city on the continent next to Talis Val. It's quite a large city. Uh, it's, it's very prosperous. It has a lot of quarries and mines and um, resources that it trade. It used to trade with Talis Val. You have learned ever since that it has it's grown quiet. quiet. Um, trade hasn't been happening. Emissaries and guards haven't been able to receive word. Also, but my this, Talis Val has been focused on the Broken Sky. and. My home spire, Spire of the Moon, is relatively close to it, mm -hmm. yeah. and they can—they've sent scouting parties, and they can actually see what's happening. It's 
like there's some kind of a... more than that. They told you that there was there was something wrong, there was yeah, something, something off wrong. in the air. And, but right. they can't figure out what it is because they've got some kind of a magic that's preventing them from spying on it. Okay. I assume from my past with Greybell, mm-hmm. before this shit, mm-hmm. uh, I came here a lot because it was a good place for entertainers well, to earn coin and stuff. I mean, the Buckland family was working for Karen Blackhearth for months. Um, it was actually, they were in really dire straits. They were really bad for money and he was offering huge sums. Um, it, the family kind of recognized that it was because he was particularly infatuated with uh, Morella and, and some of the others. Um, but yeah, he was a, a patron, basically. You were performing, most of the Bucklands were performing for him every evening, like doing various shows, and but also for the townsfolk. It's a prosperous city, like it's got a big marketplace. The key features you remember is it has a large clock tower in the center, um, which is kind of work of gnomish engineering. It has cogs and it chimes on the hour and things like that. Cool. Um, yeah, um, it's a very urban area as well. Like the cities are quite closely packed in. After the lightfall, uh, the original city of Greybell was mostly undisturbed, and so it rapidly expanded as refugees and people that needed to get away from all the monsters that had been woken up and released kind of fled to Greybell and stacked in. And so buildings have been ramshackled, built onto each other, and it's kind of created this very narrow, twisty sort of town full of stone buildings and things like that. It's also built on a layered hill, so the kind of it gets. Uh, the richer areas at the top. Like a cake? Yeah, kind of. So it's kind of got like dense kind of air. It's all hills and like cobblestone streets leading up and things like that. Does it look like Minas Tirith? Um, not, uh, far more ramshackle. Oh, kind of like, um, have you seen like some of like the fancy like Victorian London and things like that where it just mm. had that rapid expansion yeah. and they just, they threw buildings in dense. wherever they could. It's more like that and then it's kind of shaped upwards. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm and looking then, through the window. Okay. Making sure Reynard. You can is see there. the three of them like Reynard confusingly trying to talk to the <laughs> others. He's in like kind of mood where he's not really. Do you want to make a stealth check for me, actually, and then? Yeah, can we make perception? Well, no passive perception. You guys would have. I, yeah, because we're not actively. Looking well, we'll see. Right. Twenty. Twenty. Oh, passive wisdom. Uh, passive nineteen. Nineteen. So yeah, so, nobody no, sees you. Okay. He's like he's like peering in. <laughs> <laughs> um. He's in that kind of mood where he won't tell us what's going on, but there's definitely something going on. And I don't think we really want to go into Greybell <laughs> if he knows things that we don't. From the time I've known Cam, he's a very uh, open individual. Only sharing... to distract you from the truth. Yeah. Ah. There's something serious here. This is like how he was acting whenever we... Anything to do with the Bucklands, really. He shuts himself off. And the Bucklands are in Greybell? We don't. We we heard that the last we heard that Greybell we, because the vampires. You two can the, make intelligence checks, and I I can but tell we you heard some information. When we were with Biathan? Yeah, anything you guys remember, but I might be able to give you some more information. I'm gonna use my new dead reckoning dice. <laughs> nice plug, Kim. Intelligence. <laughs> 18. Yep, intelligence. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. So you remember the, the, the there was um you remember when you met Viviathan, who was a kind mm-hmm. of a thief um, student of illusionary magic. Mm-hmm. Um, you there were two vampires who were yeah. Buckland yeah. girls that had been sent to to, to get kill Cam. Cam. Um, and they mentioned somebody called Karen or, or Lord Blackhearth. Yeah. Um, but you also remember there was a period where Cam was being pursued by Demetri of this kind of um, revenant yeah. of vengeance. Yeah. And you went to a shaman's mm-hmm. island, Ralmar's island, and there there was a ritual done which kind of separated the spirit from him. And a bunch of spirits appeared before Cam, and you overheard the, a brief snippet of conversation of a female spirit that looked like a woman you'd met before who pretended to be Cam, um, uh, a woman called Amelia. Amelia yeah. Uh, you, you saw a, a spirit that looked very much like her basically say, it's not your yeah. fault, you didn't kill me. And that was the only bit of the conversation you remember hearing. But we've um, heard about Merilla before. Yeah, Marilla, you remember Amelia Marilla. accusing Cam of killing her. Yeah. Because that yeah, was a public thing. We've heard her name Marilla. Marilla. Yeah. Marilla. yeah, Amelia is the sister who claimed that Marilla was killed by Cam. Mm. Yeah. They all so you don't dead. need to worry about the names. Like, the names... <laughs> we've we've heard the names before, matters. but whenever... Yeah. Whenever anything Buckland is mentioned, bad and after things. all this time, he's still not willing to open up about this of all things. He won't open up about anything. It's not just this. And he barely knows you. I mean, he knows you guys. Yeah, but it's Cam. He won't. Uh, Uncle. Yes, my boy. 
Have you heard anything about Greybell in your travels? Did you ever go there? I attempted to pass through when I was coming down here to Rootswell, when I was seeking supplies. I found the gates closed and no guards responded to my calls. I investigated a few of the outlying farms, but they were also empty. The fields had been left to die. I didn't have the time to investigate it then and there, but it did seem awfully mysterious. Mm. Mm. A few travelers I met on the road did advise me to stay away from it at night. They said they had heard some unearthly sounds. Elora, remember those two vampires we encountered with Franco? Yes, it was with Franco, yeah. Yeah, he was trying to... He, they were from the Buckland family, They were they Buckland not? family members, and they were vampires, and they'd been turned into vampires. So that the only members of the Bucklands that we've met recently were turned into vampires to, and sent to kill Cam. Do you want to make an arcana check there for me, Reynard? Yeah. See how much you know about vampires? Not a lot. Can I see how much I know about it? Well, I've seen vampires, so would I know a bit more? You would know, two. yeah, what you saw. I feel like we put two and two together. Yeah, no, no, it's more for... So they're saying, they're talking about vampires, yeah, I've and all you've ever heard is, like, these crazy horror stories of, you know, fanged monstrosities that drink virgins' bloods and can't, you know, enter buildings unless invited and hate garlic and right, things like okay. that. You've Just heard the, the tropes, tropes. Yeah, yeah, you've heard, like, the... But they were always fanciful stories. Like, you don't think that they actually exist. Sorry, uh, vampires. Mm -hmm. Yes. The Bucklands. Mm -hmm. Well, they uh, they weren't always vampires. They've been turned into vampires. I don't know what's happened since Cam has left, but it seems like some some other force has done that. And and you don't know why. I suppose you don't know why Cam is not a vampire. Cam left before I think any of this happened. Well, I don't know actually. Well, He's when we kept left, so quiet. When we left Greybell on that, when we left Greybell on that caravan. <laughs> He's a <it> vampire. Was... <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> we never actually invited him back in. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> someone... <laughs> when we left Greybell those many moons ago, seventeenth of January two thousand sixteen. <laughs> it was. Wow. It was still. Normal. It yeah, was it seemed normal and prosperous then, and it's since then. So, I don't think Cam's any more aware of what's happening there than, as we are. But it's something to do with his family. Did he mention we have to go there? He seemed determined to head back, but alone. Well, that's not no, going that's to happen. Not gonna... Obviously. But. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to make a perception check to see how much you hear? Because you are just peering through a window. Not a lot. Eight. Eight. <laughs> you're, there, you can't, you're like yeah, straining to hear. I'm probably making a lot of noise against the window. <laughs> I, I think with that, at that point, Elora would probably notice you if you're making noise because her passive perception like is so high. Probably like squeaking my face against the glass. <laughs> then you like, duck like... down. You see like a, a smudge, like a cheek <laughs> smudge on against the window. And that bit where you know when you breathe on a cold window. And you can just like little just outline breath. of a face. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. listening, is he not? Of course he is. Of course. He's yeah. I can't hear you saying that. So, no, I'm just assuming that I've got away with it. Yeah. Can I roll to see what I know about vampires? Yeah. Uh, arcana, or probably religion as well, you can make. Either would work. Religion teaches a lot about undead. Nine. No. Um, you remember what you encountered again with the two that, f when you fought alongside Viathan, um, they were very fast, they were very unnaturally strong. Um, they did not seem to like radiant energy that came oh, from uh, Cam's spells. Um, that was pretty much it. The rest, again, is all stories. Things like they don't like holy water and garlic and the only way to kill them is a stake through the heart, that sort of thing. Yeah. Tropey um, stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Now I know that after Juto said that he's listening, I'm going to say a little bit louder so mm -hmm. that he can hear. Okay. Whatever is wrong with Cam, whatever his problems may be, he should know that we are with him <laughs> and that we will help him. If only he would let us in. Well, I'm outside, so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it means by that. <laughs> A moment, oh, please. Goodness. If you would indulge me, will you three chatter and keep him distracted? I will continue to eat my bacon. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go invisible. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Outside and look you, for... you mean you use the dot loot to yeah, cast invisibility? Yes. That is your use for the day. Well, no. It's... Yeah. Once per day. What, for the DOS loot? Yep. Yeah, I forgot. 
Once per day. Once per day, long rest. Yep. So do you, you vanish, it? turn visible. Okay. Can I wreck on that? You can. <laughs> <laughs> May I borrow your ring, Alora? Yeah, okay. I, don't, I think you'd have to attune to it, you wouldn't do. you? So. But it's a legendary ring, you have to attune to it. Laura, can, can, I go out go out, can I go outside and just sneak up and look for Yeah, stop it. I'm going yeah, to look check. for Butthead. I'm going to be creeping my way into a different rear entrance okay. to place. 22. 22. So you make, start making your way outside, being stealthy. Give me a perception check just to see if you notice yeah. uh, Juto following. Three, no. six. So, but you started moving away, kind of just trying to sneak off. You kind of find like a little outhouse building. You step inside and you just hear a, what the fuck are you doing, Buckland? What? And there is a tin tub <laughs> with Grunka sat in it. Oh! Uh, kind of like mid shave through like part of her arm. She's like with a big knife. She's like, what the fuck are you doing? Get oh, out! God, <laughs> what have I seen? <laughs> she like literally gestures with a knife like, out now. Yep, yep. <laughs> I'm gonna slam the door. You hear a. Is there a classic like moon shape in there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a little like Aww. moon shape kind of I'm thing. I'm gonna talk up to it. Why are you shaving in an outhouse? It's an orc man, fuck off! I didn't know you had <laughs> such hairy arms. Shut up! Sorry. Um, do, you, do you hear yeah, that? This? Yeah, you, and you see him outside the outhouse looking around. <sighs> I'm just in shell shock. I'm just gonna be behind him. She's a muscular woman. While he's staring at the door, I'm just gonna be like. Fuck them. <laughs> I'm literally, I'm right behind you. Are you shaving as well? <laughs> Why is everyone shaving out here? You don't have hair, you're right. Do. Just on your head. Mm. Nowhere else. <laughs> this rude. is internal thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Buckland, you are heading to Greyville, are you not? I don't know if you understand what I've just been through. Did you see that? You are heading to Greyville, are you not? Yep. <laughs> we are coming with you. If you, if you do... There is no question. I was building up to one. Fine, you, you can come along, but all I'm saying, this is gonna be dangerous. Potentially more so than anything we've encountered so far. Because Evandra told me. I'm just gonna blink. Yes. I mean, like, you've died before, right? Yes. That sucked, right? Yes. If it happens again... Well, actually, it would rather enlighten me. If it happens again... I would not be the person I am today without it. You wouldn't be a person. I don't think we can keep bringing you back. And that is a choice I will have made. <sighs> well, I can't stop you. No. You're far too stubborn. Mm -hmm. As is the other two. They care for you. Well, I know Reynard's in it for the money. I know he just wants my daggers. I don't think he has a use for them. <laughs> Everyone just wants my daggers. He's a marksman. <laughs> he uses crossbows, not... I just see the way he eyes up Nimbus, okay? And he looks at his axle and he knows, you know, he wishes he had what I had. If I may say, I'm just going to ignore that. <laughs> Any information you have would be beneficial for us. If you, he... you know us. We have travelled with you for a while. You know our sorrows, and we know some of yours. Just know that we are here. Oh yeah, I know you're here. You haven't gone in. All right, the uh, the emotional here. I have no emotions. <laughs> <laughs> you barely blink. <laughs> Thank you, Juto. I appreciate that. On behalf of the group, the spokesperson of the group. I'm just going to give a nod. And you hear some sloshing come from behind the door. Like water, like... Can we move away from this outhouse? I'm going back inside. Agreed. But do not be a trickster and leave without us. That's my whole thing. But I won't leave without you. Good, because I will find you. I know this. This is... I will find you. <laughs> I will kill you. I know that threat is always looming, so... I'm just giving, like, the death stare, like, full-on death stare. There's a teeny, tiny little smirk, but... It's overshadowed by the stare. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to walk back inside. Okay. I assume you're going to follow me. Uh, as, as you go, I'm going to... Good morning, Grunker! And then... Just... <laughs> okay, yeah, you just hear a grunt. You hear a, like, Bleh! Leave me alone! <laughs> and then you just hear a grunt. Cam comes back in. Zenith I'm going to... Before he comes back in. I'm not going to be sitting with Reynard and his uncle. I'm going to give them some time because I know that we might be leaving. And oh, I'm yeah, just going to give him some time with his family. Fam time! 
I'm yeah, because I was originally going to be going elsewhere. back to Talisar with him, wasn't I? So I suppose just as a continuation well, from our previous talks. Yeah, he'll actually, he kind of is, based on the conversations you've just been having, I assume that you won't be coming back to Talisval with me. Unfortunately, no, but obviously you're more than capable to make the journey alone. Of course. And when you get back, uh, make sure you contact Korak, anyone, Cassandra perhaps, and they'll definitely need your assistance in training the troops. Where can I find them, my boy? You could find them in the Temple of Bahamut. Temple of Bahamut. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, I'll seek them out. Of course, like I said, I'll lend whatever aid I can, teach people what I know, offer any advice. Be careful. I always am. It would be a shame if you were to rescue me from my predicament only to get yourself into one. Oh, please. You're a more capable huntsman than me. This is true, but still. You are the only decent Ferrohorn out of the three brothers that will take in my image. So, I don't I really want to... I mean, Baldir, he's the, the next best thing I have, and that's just... I'm, I can't work with him. Well, we're definitely not working with Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, is there any issues with your father I need to be aware of? Uh, ooh. he, um... He thinks I look up to you more than I look up to him. Well, that's true. It is. <laughs> so he may be a bit jealous of you, but be kind. Very well. Well, I am going to have a third portion of breakfast before I leave. As will I. I am, like, really struggling to do this. <laughs> You've barely touched your pork ribs. It's delicious. I'm savoring it. <laughs> just making yourself sick. I'm just trying to eat as much as him. You can't. Um, no one can. <laughs> my family. Yes. We're talking about leaving the city and not taking the families of the guards with them. Mm. I promised I would try to make sure that they would. Otherwise, they would have no assistance. I will do what I can, but it is ultimately my brother's business. It's I don't have any claim in your father's operations, but I can try and convince him. Whatever you can do would be much appreciated, Uncle. Of course. And I'm gonna... If not, I can always offer the men who are not taken with them or anybody who's left behind, uh, they can work with me. I can provide, I have money, they can work for me instead and I will provide them for them. That would be more than enough. Hmm. And I'm gonna sort of, like, Open my arms a little bit, like try to, like go in for a hug, but sort of like he doesn't move. <laughs> Goodbye, Uncle. He's standing. <laughs> <laughs> he like he, he looks up, he like grasps you on the kind of shoulder is like Good luck. <laughs> Goodbye. Hmm. <laughs> he starts taking all the ribs from your plate, puts them on his own. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop him. <laughs> Thank God. Waste um, not one not. Sorry? Waste not, one not. Well, I'm not going to eat it. Um, and when Cam walks in, I want to look at his Nimbus, look at my axle, but in yeah. my head, it's like, <laughs> stupid puny little dagger. <laughs> <laughs> Just a random thing that you think when you see him. Okay. I come in awkwardly, I'm like, well, if you're going to help, then uh, it would be best, uh, the best goes soon. And I walk off. <laughs> Again, <laughs> just like stand in a corner, like yeah. looking around awkwardly. Like <laughs> rummaging through a backpack or something. Just like doing busy work, like Taking trying not something to, out and, and then putting put it back, it back in. in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pick up a plate of grapes and give them to Cam. No, I'm hungry right now, thanks. Yes, you are. Don't lie. I'll open the bag of holding for later. Take the grapes in. <laughs> no! Why? No, you have to see. Oh well. Why would that ever see it? Because it's in there, like. <laughs> but, but I haven't thought of it, so doesn't, doesn't it go no, to No, that's when you want to pull things out. Everything sits in the bag, though. Uh, organic It's material. when you want to pull things out, you think of it and it summons oh, well. it. It all resists in the same dimensional space. Pocket but, dimension. Yeah. But that's okay. fine. Can you just put them in, necklace. bag so closes. What, what would happen? Well, we'll find out. <laughs> Keep in mind, bigger. your characters don't know that I've just done something. So, that's as true. far as, like, Elora's just gone, whoop. Well, yeah, but I know grapes. the other seed's in there. 
Like, oh man. I guess. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess if you're like, <laughs> Raynard looks over in horror, like. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Wait, what else have I got in there? That's a problem for future Raynard. <laughs> that is actually quite, what do you have in there? An enchanted uh, tailor's dummy. Yep. Oh yeah. Silks. That's made of wood already, the tailor's dummy, I think. I don't really have much. Silk, interesting. Uh, Felix's book. Oh, that's made of paper. That might be okay. It's things that... Oh, we could have gift wrapped the ever see. It's organic material that enlarges, remember? Mm. We're gonna have some fucking well, dire grapes on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, what else would you like to see? You just get more grapes for for. I don't know that. It's I fine. haven't made that connection with ever seed and grape. Is there anything we need to know that perhaps would give us an advantage? We should uh, pack a lot of food and go soon. I'll tell you more stuff on the way. Will you actually tell us more stuff yep. though? Great bells, see? It's kind of round. It, is it looks like a cake. Hmm? It's where we first met. Well, you actually all met in technically the, on the on road. The caravan yeah, thing. in the dungeon. But yeah. Yep. You know the city vaguely. We did. Um, how far away is it? So. Yeah, From where you guys are, Greybell is approximately a four day ride. <laughs> Let but, us go! Oof. Ooh. You have four days to tell us what's horses, going on. Though. Yes, you do. Lord, do you know you have horses. You have um, well. uh, moonspire horses. In yeah, fact. moonspire horses. You have um, oh, pale yeah. white, um, starry skinned moon, moonspire horses. Uh, Grunker enters the tavern, um, like just having dried herself and redressed and things like that. Um, she sheaths, uh, she's got her two massive flails uh, in a, a sheaths on her side, um, and she's like, Get in a backpack and things like that. Pulls it down. Glares at Cam. <coughs> Gronka. What did you do? Perv. Uh, what? Oh uh, no. Tusk you... boy. <laughs> <laughs> she just like glares at you, walks over, is just like, I vaguely overheard shouting about you going somewhere else. I'm probably gonna, I'll escort Tusk boy's uncle to the Talis Val, take him back. Um, he needs the help. Yeah. What? Uh, what this <laughs> this problem that Korak's having in the city with all this stuff going on? The the campaigning. Yeah, and yeah. also you said something maybe broken sky or something. They're coming in numbers or something like that. There was some bigger problem. They have threatened to attack Talisval unless the council surrenders. Mm. But both solutions are not. Do you reckon Korak needs another not. bodyguard? Somebody yeah. else, um, just to give him a bit more muscle. Yeah, more. I think it would be best for you to go to Cassandra and Korak in the Temple of Bahamut when you go back. All right. You are a formidable warrior. Yeah. We would be lucky to have you. Yeah? Kill all of you. <laughs> yes. I don't doubt that. Please don't. And perhaps one day I will test that. Yeah, yeah maybe. I didn't know you had a knife. I yeah. it was just two chains. It's a cultural knife, all right? It's an orc thing. Is it? Yes. Culturally insensitive pig. Whoa! <laughs> I just said you had a knife. <laughs> it's like she seems like super, the knife. super defensive and like glares at you. These tusk fanciers. Yeah. It's not the tusks. Cover my ears. <laughs> she awkwardly kind of shuffles over to Reynard, looks at Reynard, go on, go. reaches over to the side of her pack, pulls out, pulls off like a hand axe that's been strapped there. Oh. She like. Shoves it at you, like, handle first. It belongs to my brother. Take it with you, keep you safe. Your brother? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you can bring it back to me in Talisval, I guess. Just keep it temporarily. You don't have, like, a proper weapon. That sword's all bejeweled. It's not very good. It's not it's sharp a, enough. It, it's a nice... Thank you, Grunker. Yeah. Um, Just bring it back to me, or something, if you want. I'll find <laughs> you in Talisval. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, Gonna awkwardly back away yeah, from gonna Raynard kind of and like, Grunker, she's just and I'm gonna push Cam away as well. I'm gonna I know monk that he's merge gonna be into looking. the background. <laughs> she just kind of like looks around. She like picks up a rib, starts eating it, but just is desperately trying not to look at anybody. I'm like looks push, at the ground. Push Cam away because nah. he's looking a bit too much. Reynard, stop it! Could... Stop it! Um, <clears throat> what for your journey? Yeah, uh, you seem to be traveling quite light. I suppose we're taking a lot of the supplies with us. 
Yeah. Would you like, and I'm going to slowly take off my cape and give that to her. <laughs> Something to keep you warm. <laughs> the... um, you, she kind of like, her eyes go really wide and the, the green sort of skin around her face, like the color darkens around the cheeks and she's just like, yeah, I guess it gets a bit cold. And she holds her hand out. <laughs> they, for she your like, grunker, she um, takes it and she takes it very delicately and you can see that she actually kind of really sort of like, she kind of holds it and she's like, yeah, and she like puts it in a bag and then... Just in case, Grunker. Um, yep. Cool. I wish you well on your journey and I'm going to do the same thing I did with my uncle and just sort of like... She kind of does the same thing. She kind of like awkwardly like steps in. <laughs> and she, like, she like goes for a hug and then when you pat, she's, she's like, yep. <laughs> Pats you on the shoulder. I'll see you back in town as well, Grunker. And you just see like an ever so slight grin, like a little kind of tusk like poking over her like sort of lip and she kind of like runs a hand through her hair. Um, and she's, you know, she's a quite strong, but she's still, you know, she's still a half, she's not fully orc, she's only yeah, half yeah. orc. And she kind of like tucks it and she kind of shoulders the bag and she's like, all right, moustache man, let's go. <laughs> she like awkwardly like goes over to Felix and they start getting ready to leave as well. Oh. Gronker's hand axe. Hand axe. Mm -hmm. okay. um, it is actually, you notice as you're kind of holding it, the blade is made of silver. Mm. It's a silvered hand silver. axe. Silver? It's a silvered hand axe. Oh, How hell, useful! Like, yeah! <laughs> Man. Wait, that's Not really. Oh. You all have magical weapons. <laughs> like, doesn't really help well, you that much at this point. Huh? It, med werewolves, you have magical weapons. Actually, we've already been there. Yeah, yeah, we've been there. You're fine. Um, They're fine, though. Like. this earlier. Gronker. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> really? <laughs> um, and yeah, what supplies do you want to gather? Just like food and things like that? Garlic. Uh, these guys <laughs> probably can't just give you... Yeah, if you want to buy specific things, now's the time to tell me, because this is probably the only place on the road that you're going to be able to buy stuff. What are we like for potions, etc.? I have um, one superior healing and one poison vial. I'm I will tell you now. I'm asking Kim, because Kim has like a stash. I think, she knows, I think she's handed it It's going to be a limited supply on um, anything I don't, I don't have a poison because I gave it to... But m mundane items, choose. there's lots Superior. of good steel, like any kind of steel works, woodcraft, um, food, traveler's gear, all of that stuff is in abundant supply. Potions and magic items are rare. There isn't really any like scrolls or potions or anything like that here. There is two regular healing potions you can buy. They're 50 gold each. That's it. Um, I'll take yeah. But if you want to buy things them? like yeah, garlic or you know, any kind of like weapons or Harry, armor and stuff. Uh, there is actually, Anything there is a there is a priest of Melora. There is actually a cleric of Melora uh, who operates in the village who can bless water, um, but so can cat. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, you, if you cast the bless spell on a container of water, it creates holy water. Can I buy... <clears throat> up to a, a, like a canteen size. You can't be like, okay. bless a bathtub. <laughs> bless <laughs> this river. Throw them in. You can't do that. <laughs> Can I buy the two regular? Yep, so 50 gold each. Okay, They're 2d4 like plus twos. I've what got, got two greater and one normal. What are you like for potions? One superior. Give, one so I'll give you red. one. One reg? One reg. Um, can I also just buy some garlic? Just Yeah, you can buy cloves of garlic, like sort of rings of garlic. It'd probably be bowl. like a copper piece or something like that. Like I just had this vision of Juto walking out of the town just completely surrounded in garlic, like walking along. Like, like <laughs> rings, like... <laughs> yeah. you know. It was um, a really funny image. There was some hanging from your... your it's kind of like, um, <laughs> like, a, like a branch, like a sprig. It's not like a ring of garlic. It's like a kind of a cluster of bulbs and just kind of stacked together. Like a line of them. <clears throat> My crossbow bolts, I guess they're steel tipped. Like. Yes, steel tipped ones, yeah. Are they... Hmm. Okay. What are you thinking, thinking there? Um, of now this is the time them, to come yeah. up with stuff like this. For some of them to take the steel tip off and mm -hmm. just to sharpen them so they're wooden... Mm -hmm. Sharpened bolts. bolts. Um, the bol bolts are quite thin. They're, you know, oh, okay. they're quite thick. The story, the stake <laughs> has to completely pierce through the heart, but it could work. Um, they would become, they'd be less effective. They'd probably do less damage and be a little bit less accurate okay. without the steel tips. As we travel, can I like take some of my torches and turn them into stakes mm -hmm. yep. as we travel? Yep. Do you, you're not skilled in woodworking, are you? I think you had skilled in masonry. Masonry, give me yeah. So make a dex, <laughs> just make a dexterity <laughs> check. So and cooking, she okay. can cook. I don't I'm, know I'm why. skilled in masonry and cooking. Well, that's I, what she I as a slave. She was yeah. made to build stuff. That's yeah. how she knows and I masonry. Because I took the folk hero background, which is why I said 
<laughs> yeah, the cooking comes from oh, self-care. Oh, look, it's a natural one. Okay, so you're but like, do you oh, want, do you easy. Want dex? Chisels, like, it was dex, but natural one. Be, like, Na- natural one. Um, <laughs> I mean, even, it's not going to be 10. That's a dex saving throw, not a dex check. It'd just be your dex modifier. Six? So it'd be six. So you, how many torches do you have in your inventory? Ten. Okay, ten. You probably... I don't want to do all of them. No, no, no. I, how, like five. Okay, so you take five of the torches and you start, but you kind of approach it like, oh, it's like stone, chisel, and you split a torch in half immediately. You're like, ah, uh, okay. Um, the next one, you try and shape into a stake, you make it way too thin, like it takes you too many times, and you get three stakes out of the five. Cool. So you fuck up the first two and then you make five stake, uh, three stakes. Why is everyone preparing all these things? No reason. Well, <laughs> vampires? You know that there were vampires involved. This is not, um, I would, this is, seems fairly Do you not remember non-meta. the vampires we came across when we encountered Franco Sunsitter? Mm, I remember them Sorry, very what well. Was that yes. name? They were part of the Buckland family, were they not? Yeah. Yeah, they were. And the last we saw of the Buckland family, they were in Greyvale. Yep. Which has now mysteriously closed its doors. All I'm saying is, before we do the stabbing with the stakes, just just pass, just run it by me if I really <laughs> like them, and that there's any chance of reversal on the whole vampire curse. Cam, of course we wouldn't do anything to your family without exploring other options. You've just done the same for me. My father was a werewolf, and none of you killed him. We didn't stake him. You're right. And we didn't silver him, so let's just we'll get the resources, but let's not do the stakey and the garlicky straight away. We just... do you know anything else about vampires or about... Me? The, the, about your family? Do you know anything? anything? that can help <laughs> us? Well, Great Bell is a city and it looks like a cake. I used to go there with my troop because it was profitable, because Blackhearth was a man that paid a lot. He was the uh, leader of the town, like a mayor. And he paid really well until he did some bad stuff. And then the bad stuff, you know, I forgot about. And now the town's gone dark and it's all vampires. How many Bucklands are there? So it's, because it's not an actual blood family. It's like like 20 people. It's like 20 people. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them are now vampires. I'm answering because I knew Chris Trot didn't know the answer. <laughs> so there's potentially 20 people in your family there. Well, they didn't all settle in Greybell. I mean, we came there to work as performers. I Amelia mean, something may have happened. came after us, remember? Mm, yeah. Did she? I say us. I don't remember. It's foggy. I'm just wondering if there's anything that we can prepare because, Cam, you're going to have a big target on your back when you walk in here. Yep, it's already there. On your cape. Really big. We shouldn't approach the front doors. We should find another way in and see if I can find someone that isn't a vampire that can help us. That I know. The mystic. No, he's dead. Is he alive? He was always on the brink of death. Okay. He might have been dead the whole time. What if we get very there strange man. and we find the entire town is filled with vampires? Yeah. Well, Evandra came to me and I saw her and she was great and we had a lovely chat. She's such a nice person. You should, you should really meet her sometime. She's I amazing. sort of did at one point. Did you? Almost. You well, probably... she sent that, that angel to, yeah, that wasn't to get her. rid of Crown Rand. Yeah, but... Your eyes would probably cool. burn out if you saw her, to be honest. You probably can't handle it. I think my eyes had burned out and I'd fallen into lava. <laughs> That's a good point. Either way, she came to me with a purpose and a goal. It was to cleanse this place and that this place was potentially the source of something far worse than an army taking over Talos Vale and the Broken Sky. Mm. Worse her, than the Broken Sky? Well, it's a plague and it could wipe out life as we know it. Everyone could end up being a vampire. Which is worse than a war, sure. A war kills lots of people, but everything's cyclical. People come back from it, bounce back, and humans are still humans. Tieflings are still tieflings. If everyone gets bitten by a vampire, we're all vampires. I'm pretty sure I don't like the nightlife. 
I like the sun. How do we protect ourselves from vampires? I don't know. I know as much as you guys. I was with you the whole time when this happened. Mm. If you see Evandra again, please ask her. I will. The point I'm trying to make is, she wouldn't come to me if she didn't think that we had a chance. Why else would she throw me into this? I was going to go alone. So, if I can do it on my own, then it'd be easy for us. Did she ask you to go alone? Yep. That's not true at all, is it, Cam? She said it straight away. It's like, Cam, this is you. It's all you. No. Evander's a bigger fool than I thought. Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Did your uncle Sorry, ever tell you any stories about vampires? Is that something that he faced? That's a point. Uh, what are vampires? Are they monstrosities? They undead. undead. They're just undead. Okay. Uh, no, your your uncle. Things like undead. The it's. I mean, that's always been priests deal with undead. Yeah. Like even your uncle knew that his skills, whilst impressive, he knows how to fight a giant, how to fight a giant monster. Fighting undead is different. They can, they can literally the suck thing. the life out of you. They can curse you, and that's beyond his knowledge. He, he has no, almost no magical knowledge, your uncle. Yeah. Is there, are there any priests in, where are we, Rootswell? Yeah, there's a priest in Melora, but... Um, can ask him. Yeah, he is a, uh, a crotchety old human fellow, kind of leathery face, like deep wrinkles, old wooden staff. Um, he introduces his name as uh, Hashem. Um, uh, he's just known as Hashem. He doesn't have like an official title, uh, and he's kind of a wild man. He's got a big, big bushy beard and wild hair. Great big um, bushy beard. And he wears like thick animal hides. Looks very shamanistic. Radagast. Um, very Radagast, but like less kind of weed dude. Right. More sort of just like <laughs> like comes out of the woods kind of thing. Looks like a bit of a loon. Um, <laughs> and you actually have to ask the villagers like, oh, is there anyone we can speak to? And they say, oh yeah, go to the far end of the village. You'll find a, a kind of stone circle. Wait there until midday and lay out some food, and he'll come and speak to you. Um, and if you guys do that and you go and lay do that you out, really have time for this. Well, it's up to you. Yeah, like that's what they say. If you want to speak to him, you have to go go to the the edge of the woods and lay out an offering to him, and he'll come and speak to you. If it is as dangerous as you have been warned, it might be worth it to try and gather some information. What kind of food we is don't he like? Have much to go on. All right. Fine. Take some meat, they say. Just take, like, a cooked meat. And you'll come. Cooked meat. Okay. You guys make your way over to the edge of the forest, which is on your kind of way out anyway. Um, you gather your supplies, and you make your way there. And you sit down, and you place out this thing. It's around midday. You place out the food, and you do hear, within a few moments, like, rustling coming from the woods, and kind of emerging from it, kind of clutched onto a gnarled wooden staff, is this kind of wild man. And he comes out, he's like, yes, you seek the wisdom of Melora. And he gathers up the, st he just starts eating the meat with his hands. He's like, we poison that. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> we seek your wisdom. Yes, we are heading to Greybell. What do you know of vampires? He looks at you. Ah. Creatures of darkness. They are born of the night sky and of death. They drink the blood of the innocent, and only purity can drive them away. Purity and radiance? Yes. You don't fully know, no, you do you? Don't know. I know that they are a great evil and blight upon the land. Yeah, we knew that already. Uh, anything specific? Any ways to deal with them? Any strategies? If we were to come across them. He looks, he's like, I could speak with Melora on your behalf, if you wish, to inquire of her knowledge. I may not know, but I can ask my lady. That would be nice, if you've got a direct line. <laughs> she will only speak of a name. I can... I may speak to her and receive an omen. If you ask a question, she will tell you whether such actions are for good or for ill. Is this a form of augury? Yes. 
I can do that, guys. We don't need this rock. Crockety old man. Why, the, the power of you, you, who are you to hmm? speak of such power? You do not have that power. I'm a cleric of Avandra. Bah! Goddess of thieves and, and How about coin. I do an orgery and you do an orgery and we'll see who does it quicker and who has the better <laughs> god. If loads of people do it, that's an orgery orgy. But <laughs> it's an orgery orgy. <laughs> Only if you provide me the coin to pay. Guess what? I'll do it for free, and I'm going to start sitting down <laughs> and preparing my order. Do you have augury prepared? So. No! <laughs> do you actually have it prepared? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's not filled in. The wisdom of Avandra has not prepared you for this. <laughs> <laughs> but the wisdom of Malora is always with me. Fine, we'll pay how much? 25 gold. No. 25 gold. We've just given you some cooked meat. That was to bring my wisdom to you. Now mm. you must pay for my divine power. It's very, um, very lonely out here, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, not many people <laughs> around to no. witness things. I do not need people, I have the beasts. It feels like he's doing something good. Just let him have his moment. Do people miss you? <laughs> Jeez. Yes. I'm gonna step in if he does yes. anything, don't I? But the beast Because I've go. got a very important mission. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And... Then pay me your 25 gold and my wisdom shall be yours for your mission. How can I guarantee what you're going to give me is useful? I swear it upon the rocks and the birds that I will augury on your behalf. I'm just going to kick a little pebble. Like this. Do not disturb the rock. It's not a rock, it's a pebble, mate. And it's a rock. Let's have Melora's realm. That's a rock child. <laughs> a babby. Babby Fine. rock. I'm going to give him 25 gold. Ah. Gathers it up, puts it in like a little hide pouch. That's all I've got left. And then he pulls out... Is uh, that all the gold you have left? He pulls out like <laughs> bones no, marked with symbols and writing um, and a stone bowl. Um, and he uh, pours a little bit of animal blood and he throws the stone, the sticks in and he begins shaking them, lifting up to the sky. Goddess of the storms of the land of the rocks and the sea, uh, show me what, what is your question? Oh. In fact, no, don't bother asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> it is simply, I will receive an omen about your actions that you will take Oh, and then he looks in the bones. How much of this is strictly necessary? Can I sense any <laughs> arcane? He is casting a spell. You you are 100% sure that he is actually making a proper prayer. This is divine magic. Good. Ah, ah. She speaks to me. He's dramatizing. You don't need to do that. You do that. She says. The performance. If you travel to the city of the Deathly Bell, you will hear a terrible song that rises the dead. Mm. That if you succeed, you will bring great good to this world, but you will face a darkness, a darkness strong enough, it is said, to block out the sun. <gasps> ah. She well. claims it is both weal and woe that awaits you. Weal? And he goes back into the woods. <laughs> wheel! <laughs> wheel or woe! A wheel. wheel or woe! Wheel or woe? Wheel. W E A L. Wheel. Oh, right. <laughs> what? W E A L. Oh, wheel. like a. Bad. Just means bad omens, bad, bad luck. <laughs> to count Misfortune. Like, we need to be careful of the wheels. wheels. <laughs> All wheels. No wheels! No wheels! Wheels bring woe. Uh, wheel or woe, and then he just he backs off right. into the woods. Um, oh. So how do we kill the vampires? We oh, I'm going to buy beer tonight! Because <laughs> <In the woods. laughs> uh. that's what we were asking him for, <laughs> and he didn't tell us that. <laughs> yeah. He told you that they are servants of darkness. And wheels, really bad wheels. Wheels. <laughs> All bad. we know now is that <laughs> wheels are we a threat. need to do this. <laughs> if we don't... If we don't, it's it will blot out the sun, which we were kind of aware of already. Yeah, it was an well, omen. Pretty much every omen is bad. <laughs> True. <laughs> Unless you do something about it. 
which we intend to. Which makes you good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> Divine magic. Um, All right. I'm just going to kick a rock and then walk off. <laughs> Juto, have you got that bag of holding? Yes. Good. Can I have it? No. Why do you need it? It's a shared bag. What do you need? I just want a grape. Ah, it. <laughs> Would I think about that it's ever? It's too seed? late now. You wouldn't know. About no, because it, no. the way she thinks it's work is you think of it and then you pull no. it out. Okay. I pass the bag of holding. I'm hungry, so. You think grapes? Grape. Single okay. grape. Single grape. Um, you feel something like your whole hand encompasses something squishy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like you were expecting. You're like bag, doing right? this, and you're like. Whoa. You have to, you're gonna, it's it's like so round, you have to put- Someone hold the bag. <laughs> uh oh. And you pull out like a watermelon- Whoa! <laughs> <sighs> is it, what colour is it? Normal? Uh, no, it looks, it looks violet. Uh, and it's thick, thor- almost like thorny veins on the inside of it. <laughs> you think it's edible? No, but it's cool though. Ah. I would throw it I away. I mean, it smells like a grape. Nope. Constitution saving through, please. <laughs> I believe I have made a mistake. Uh, I never thought, I just kind of put them in. Oh, I well. have in fact made a huge mistake. <laughs> We're gonna, what time is it? Time for a break? 20 uh, past. 20 past. We see what happens to camp first. 10 minutes. Nothing, you don't see anything. Oh, good time for a break. Good time for a break. It is a good time for a break. Because <laughs> then I can talk, I don't have to write a message to Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can just tell him when the others are. You'll find yeah. out what his skin's the gone blue again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we'll be back in, we're going to, 10 minutes, we'll most be back. likely. No, no, no. We'll, be we'll be back, back as soon as we, we can. can. Five minutes! Don't well, say he <laughs> as, Five soon as, as soon can. as we can, we'll be back ASAP. Good Don't go anywhere. Get a tea and a coffee. Get a drink, get a snack. Gonna be right back. Yeah, bye. 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 bye.
Hello, welcome back to High Rollers. We're all freezing it's in so the cold. game's room. Um, it's blue, not because of the lights, it's just that cold. Maybe if we change them to like orange or red, <laughs> it'll be warmer. It won't. <laughs> On it! It'll just make us feel He's sad. He's gonna do it! I know he will. Uh, welcome back. Uh, the party are just making preparations <sighs> to head to a city called Greybell. Produce flame. Where? Can I use this in real life? Sure. That'd be nice. I, that'd be amazing. Katie, if you could cast Produce Flame in real life, that would be amazing. Yeah. It means I would be You're warm. trying to psychologically make us feel like it's warm. I feel yeah. warmer already. I don't. Um, <laughs> so, the party is making preparations. Um, totally are there... Backwards. So, it's going to take you four days riding on horses, um, which is easily doable. You know the way there. You're not going to get lost. There's roads to follow everything else. Is there anything you want to do during those days? Yep. Okay. So, I would like to... Good. Okay. Sleep. Yeah. Prepare. Yeah. Because you can prepare new spells every day. Scrying. Okay. <gasps> I would like to cast scrying. Okay. On. Irella. Okay. Uh, it fails. The spell fails, I believe. I will read the spell description. As planned. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, you've got the spell description there, haven't you? Yes, you can see in here a particular creature you choose that is on the same plane of existence. The target must make a wisdom saving throw, which is modified by how well you know the target. Yeah. Um, nope. Yep. Yeah, it fails. Uh, so it's actually Facebook stalking someone. Mm. Kind of, yeah. You reach out and they can they can shut you down there. She blocked um, me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Unfriended and blocked you. It's just a call, isn't okay. it? Essentially. Yep. A telephone call. So no, uh, it fails unfortunately. So you go to do it and just it just doesn't the spell doesn't seem to take hold. Hmm. That's a fifth level, so I've got a second one. Okay. For the this day. Mm -hmm. You can cast you can I'll cast it again. Try the mystic. Okay, the old uh, Buckler Mystic. If he's alive, I don't actually okay. fully know. So... Um, uh, I have some scrying that I could do, but I don't know any of the targets, so it would be more difficult yeah, for me. Yeah, it's got to be someone I know. It doesn't have to be, it just gives you a higher chance. If the target knows you're casting a spell, you it, can um, fail the save voluntarily. It, <laughs> like Morella, the spell just fails. This doesn't feel good, guys. I'm trying to reach out to these people with my incredible clerical abilities and I'm not getting anything. Well, who are you trying to contact? I tried the mystic. Arguably, he could have been dead. You did say that he could be dead. Three. Is there anyone alive that you know that was in that town or anyone that... Can I think of someone I used to know from well, the Buckland family? Both of your spells. I mean, it's you concentration, actually. Slot, yeah, it's concentration, actually, as well. Um, no, this is fifth level. I've got two slots. So. But you can do it. You at can cast level. it at far. You can cast any spell at a high level, as no. many people have. Have I got a six? Uh, what level cleric are you? Well, I think you we've got four days. Yes. But we've got four days. You've got four so you days. can you do can as many tomorrow. times. Yeah. Out of interest, if you can't reach them because they're dead, and oh, this is oh, they're spell. undead. They they can <laughs> also. If well, they, no, it, if, they, if they were undead, they're still on the same plane of existence. It says okay. a creature, it doesn't say a living creature. Ah. They can willingly choose to dismiss this spell. Oh. But they don't know who's casting it. They become aware that they're being scried upon and they can resist it. Yes. Okay, so the second day, do you want to try again? Because the focus you have, you own a crystal ball that you bought, so. Yeah. yeah. Leave a voicemail. Leave a voicemail. There is no, seemingly, you try the spell, there is not, mm. that person does not exist on the material plane. Who? <coughs> Mirella and the Mystic. Okay. Neither of them Shit. are on the material plane. So, Shit. and Mirella is... Mirella's dead. R we know that she's dead. Why are you contacting her? <laughs> <laughs> I did wonder that myself, Tom Hazel, yeah, yes. Yeah, but you don't, but, but he might not know that. He might, yeah. Cam might not know. He, he might, it's well, also Cam I just, it might be him hoping. It's, I think it's he like, left her. I've never used Skyrim before. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he worked on the dead. <laughs> me and Cam. <laughs> he left her bleeding in a pool of blood. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, so she could be alive. Yeah. Yeah. True. Okay. Um, yeah, I did that to see if I could reach out okay. to her current form. So that's, that's what Cam's kind of focusing on the first day of travel. Anything else? I could Did you try. guys want to do your staking? Or I could like... try commune with Already nature. Already did that. Yeah. Are I've... we within three miles? Of what? Of Greybell. Um, we can wait until we are. Probably not, not now, yet. but you will. You can cast it when you're close enough, yeah? You can absolutely cast that when you get close enough. Um, commune with nature, it would um, gain knowledge oh. of the surrounding territory. Yeah, no, you can definitely cast that when you get close That's enough. You're not close useful. enough now. So when the, the crotchety old man, he said that Radiant did damage to the thing, didn't he? I don't remember him saying that. 
in those exact words. In the thing of me. No, we know that from our fight with them. He, no, he, he said purity he drives them away. Pure, pure. Oh. But Juto and I know from previous fights that radiant, radiant damage, damage. Which I know that Cam does. Well, not all you know, of us I, do. I know that he I has do. light. Yeah. Oh, you do as well. Juto does shit. radiant. I can, Moonbeam is radiant. Like. Well, I do not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not. Beyond turning these into sharpened little spears. Mini stakes, shooty little stakes. Yeah. Shooty stakes. Is anyone able to, I don't know, infuse some sort of light power into d- turn these into? Why not tip them with poison? Poison. Would, would poison, poison work on a vampire if it's already dead? Poison can work on most things. By your experience, you know that that's not true. The amount of <laughs> creatures you fought and you've gone poison, poison? damage. No. And I'm like no. <laughs> Demons? No. I Animated can... armor? No. With my abilities. Ghosts? No. As the most clerical person that you know, yeah. and potentially in the world, okay. I can potentially in I mean, this add a divine strike to my attacks. I don't know if there's some way that I can, when it's your action, I can help you. Um, you could, I believe there, I don't know if you'll have access to it, because I don't I know if it's on your you list. Uh, there is a spell that called Magic Weapon. Damage. Damage. Which makes a weapon magical. Let's see if a cleric. Like nope. It's a certain type. It's war clerics, I think, get it. Yeah. Fine. Get it. Stupid manual shooting. So, <laughs> who do you um, think I am? Anything else? What I'm arrows. gonna do? Yes. While we're camping. Yes. Book. Is create. Uh, cast a spell. Word of recall. That's fine. You know. What okay. I mean. What's that? Word of recall. What's that? Where are you casting it? Casting it random camp. Casting it first creates the sanctuary, which okay. is here, Ooh. and then. So you're Me casting it again, we will instantly teleport back to this spot. You're three days what? away from Great Bell when you create this this um, Word of Recall Sanctuary. I'll just... Find like a little secluded forest, yeah. make a camp, away. and then you create that as your... Safe if we space. need to get away from Great Bell immediately, for any reason, our Laura safe word <laughs> is grape. Okay. Grape. Grape. Uh, that, no, that could go be, wrong. That can no. absolutely I'm not talking be. of grapes. Could I have a grape? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> What? We don't know the effects from the last one. Also, you talk about grapes a lot. That yeah, can't that's be yeah. Just, you talk Keep about things moving you a lot. You literally just said grape. That t- it, yeah, you said, can, can I have another grape? grape? We need to find well, let's just word. do something. I think we said grape really soon. eight times. Since, okay, fine. Uh, Different word. I, I have a problem for your word of recall. What? It has a solution here. You must designate a sanctuary by casting a spell within a location such as a temple dedicated to or strongly linked to your deity. Oh. This random forest is unfortunately not strongly linked temple, to quick. <laughs> Maybe if we carve Evandra's face into that tree. <laughs> well, I could... You can try. <laughs> <laughs> I will give it a percentile chance of working. I could. Really? I can. No. I can save a, a tree spell. Oh, right. <laughs> no, it's up to Cam if he casts a spell. Yeah, to be fair, your tree walking would be just as effective. Yeah. Um, Laura, look! Just as effective! Remember this tree! Look I, at it! I can remember many trees. Look at how the, I could the branches! Take... Reynard, I could literally take us back to Talos Val or somewhere way more useful than the middle of nowhere! I'm just making sure you're... Oh, ta- yeah, no, that's good. Chrysaris? Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough! No, no I've never been there! there. Is it? Yeah, but might it's be very edge. convenient that you can teleport into my, never... my level kingdom. <laughs> I've never Nerf been there, so I can't. I can't Lift that fog of war! Lift it! No! no um, that's a level 90 zone, you're not allowed in there. <laughs> how, many sp- how many spells have I got? You've got loads. <laughs> you can, you've got four days, you can just swap your spells. No, I know, I'm now. trying to make sure I've that I swap out the right okay, things. Okay, but maybe save it until. Okay. Cheetos ready. Laura's done. I know. Um, I want to give the spellcasters a chance because we rarely do this. We rarely actually play Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> the way a lot of other people do it. Is this what is Dungeons and Dragons? I'll tell you what, I'm, if I ever get to be a fucking player, I'm going to play a wizard and I'm never going to take offensive spells. It's just going to be Mark doing like little like, I create a wall of stone. <laughs> hey, that's useful. I know, it's you pretty useful. You should be tiny hut. <laughs> 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 Levitate. Oh. <laughs> How many I spells can, can I prepare? I always forget. Uh, it's like it's your uh, druid level plus uh, wisdom. Is it wisdom for mm-hmm. druid? Yeah. yeah, for druid it's wisdom modifier. And proficiency? 17. No. Hmm. Right. I think I, what do you want to do, I did Buckland? not do that last I'm time. I'm going to cast Legend Lore. L- what's that? It's a fifth level spell. 
Name will describe a person, place, or object. Don't make me. The spell just, brings uh, to mind a brief summary of the significant lore about the thing you named. The lore might consist of current tales, forgotten stories, or even secret lore that has never been widely known. If the thing you named isn't of legendary importance, you gain no information. The more information you already have about the thing, the more precise and detailed the information you receive is. Ooh, okay, yeah, this is a good, so, good spell, Kamba. Kamba is on form. Yeah. Sorry. What are you? No. Hmm? I missed that. It's well, I mean, you know uh, the powers that Evandra grants you. The grape is helping me right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> He's essentially got Wikipedia access. The information Sweet. you learn is accurate, yep. but might be couched in figurative language. For example, if you have a mysterious magic axe on hand, the spell might yield this information. Woe to the evildoer whose hand touches the axe, for even the half slice is the hand of the evil ones. Somewhere there. Yeah, so basically it can give you like fabled stories. Kind of riddles stuff. and things. Uh, new, discovery, I don't trust riddles. Riddles. Okay, you also need 250 gold. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, I'm going to change that. That's 450 gold because it's incense worth 250 and four ivory strips worth at least 50 gold each. We'll forget the, the specifics. It's 450 gold worth of material components. Look at that. This elf horse that I've been riding on has ivory up its ass. <laughs> well, do you have the gold? Does the group have the gold? Alora has the gold. I have fucking nothing. I gave you everything. <laughs> I apparently have, I have 201 three, gold. I have three Where are you guys keeping this? <laughs> I have 300. I'm going to go ahead and say money. that that's a mistake, and I'm probably going to like reduce no, that. Doesn't, that doesn't sound like a mistake. You no, had a lot of money when we started. I gave you like a good like five, six hundred gold when we started playing. Yeah, but playing. then that tiefling Just treasure hunter guy took half Saito. of it. Yeah, he gave some back. Yeah. I'd say 200, no, 200 gold. You some money. Money but probably gave you some money. That, that's mm -hmm. what you have now, yeah. and that's... What you have, make sure that's you're canon. marking this stuff off. No, I've yeah. got 350. You've got 350, so if you borrow 100 off Reynard... You've got 350? Yeah. You said 25 is your last amount of gold. It was an addition. Oh, okay. I had 375 and now I've got 350. Okay. I trust you. I don't, good trust, DM. I don't trust myself. Trust these players. But I, I want this spell to happen, so... This okay. information will so, be valuable, right? It will be extremely valuable. More valuable than that kooky old man. So my next question for you, Cam Buckland, is what is the person, place or object you're going to name or describe? Place, Grey Bell. Okay. Okay. So, um, it takes you 10 minutes. You prepare a long ritual. Um, you gather up the gold and, you know, you place it in a sort of design of Avandra's um, and you meditate and you focus and you, you name Greybell, the city of Greybell, um, to receive the law. Mm, Reynard, you better give me that <laughs> Mark it off. I'm going to give you 150, of current by the way, so you've got some stories or even oh. secret law that has never been nice. widely known. Okay, so I'm making this up on the spot, so forgive me if the language isn't perfect. Um, the the city of bells sits under darkness. A terrible power has been unleashed. Power of another world, summoned by a figure once held in respect. The dirge singer has been brought to Greybell. The land dies and the people suffer. Blood is farmed as though cattle itself. Keram wields the power of Strahd. Ah! Oh. 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 Motherfucker, Strahd! Right, uh, Juto's gonna go all the way back to the desert. Can all we go the way <laughs> Good luck! <laughs> Shit. Strahd's a weird name. <laughs> yeah, that is a weird name. You've never heard it before. No, but the players really, really don't <laughs> want to hear it. <laughs> the Dirge Singer. Yes. Dirge Singer, which is which correlates with what the kooky man was saying about listening for a, a song. A terrible song rises the dead. Yep. So there's a song. Uh, Black Hearth has summoned power of Strid. Did you write all of that down? Because I can't remember what I just said. Strudel. <laughs> She's I think Kim did, yeah. She's got yeah. A, a I didn't write it word for word, but I wrote the key bits. The key bits, like And ignored Catalan, all the stuff, stuff like, like okay, Grey Bell's yeah. dark <clears throat> and yeah. people are being milked. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I've wrote, written down wheel or woe. <laughs> wheel and woe. Wheel so, and woe? That's even worse. And, okay. This Strad and. thing, person, is from a different world. And this evil is now in Greybell. 
because of Black Black Hearts. Yeah, Karen Black Hearts, yeah. Was he not your patron? He was until, you know, stuff happened and then he's not anymore. What does he have against you? He has uh, nothing against me. Maybe I stood in the way of something he wanted. And what did he want? He wanted people. Anyway, <laughs> let's go. Could I uh, roll right. the right. history on Strong? You can try, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 19. <laughs> Ooh. 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 23. 23. You vaguely, something about the name, it was unusual you remember it. Maybe a story in a book. A book about magic you remember reading that talked of other worlds, the plains, and it spoke of these different places, and it spoke of um, uh, forgotten realms of different places, and it spoke of kingdoms of magic where magic was greater than it is in Iraq, and it spoke of uh, strange places where adventurers could travel amongst the stars aboard ships. Um, and one of the stories, it was very fantastical and it was written very vaguely. It was kind of the esoteric writings of a wizard translated. And he spoke of a great evil, a man named Strad, a tragic figure who had lost his love and succumbed to the ancientest of darkness, the most ancient of darkness, who had the command of an entire plane. Well, um... A dark god, can I, can essentially. I, can I forget that? Because that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Um, <clears throat> so, unless you guys want to do anything else, I'm going to do that with thingy thing. Commune with nature. Thing, could it be? Yeah. Yep. That. So, as you get within the three Mars, already you begin to see some of the signs. You pass through villages, farm, you pass farms, and they're ghost town. Nobody's there. There's no livestock, no people, the stores ransacked or left barren. Um, I've got it here as well. Does that, do they look, uh, I don't suppose attacked, but like hurriedly evacuated? evacuated? Abandoned, or? yeah. Some of them look attacked. Some of them look like things have been torn apart and ripped open and things like that. Um, but generally those are only the ones really close, as you're getting closer and closer. The farm fields, they look dead. Like it's springtime or summertime, they should be in sort of like full harv in full kind of growth, but they're dying. Um, thick thorny vines kind of surround the area around the city. And you can see now in the distance, nestled amongst kind of like hilled grasslands, there is a kind of large hill upon which a city has been sort of like built up for over years and years. Mm -hmm. And you can see that it is a twisted, thin, narrow corridors, stone buildings with slatted roofs that are dilapidated and falling apart, kind of mishmash jumble of buildings. And it gets steeper and steeper. And then at the very center, there is a tall clock tower um, with a metal face. Um, so the city itself It just, looks... just peeks out over the top of the buildings, this clock tower. Yeah, so the city itself looks not deserted, but you know. The well, I mean, you can't see people, but you can see that it, it doesn't look attacked or destroyed. The walls are quite high; they're about sixty feet high stone walls. There are no guards patrolling them. Mm. It looks empty. What time of day is it? Uh, when you guys arrive, I would say maybe sort of like five p.m. Six five six p.m. Um, Laura, you stop for a moment once you think you're within sort of three miles or so, and you cast commune with nature. You are instantly flooded with knowledge and you learn the kind of the, the druidic magic, the ley lines of power seep into you and you sense immediately that there is something incredibly wrong with this land. Um, necrotic energy is, is killing off the plant life. Animals die within the region. The only animals that survive are corrupted. Um, bats, wolves, rats, um, crows, they're the only things that have survived and they are flourishing, they are stronger. They are more predatory. You know that there is powerful undead forces within the city. Um, a huge number. Um, you don't know the type, but you know that there is at least a single, two single figures that have most of the power. And then there is just a, a dominant undead presence around them. Um, but there is also living presences. There are people. There are um, a small number of people that are living in the city itself. Oh. And you, 
the, the water is pretty putrid. Um, it's not really safe for drinking around. Um, buildings, there are, um, there are buildings. Um, some of them have been destroyed or dilapidated. Some of them are flourishing. Some of them are, are in good, good standing. But it's uh, fallen apart pretty rapidly. It's all the information. Considering the last time we saw it, it was okay. I mean, the city, looking at it from a distance, looks no different. Just there's no guards. It, it looks empty. Dark. Yes, dark it, it looks. It, there's there's not quite like a haze, but you know, it's only five o'clock. You're in summer. It should still be quite bright, but it's already getting quite dim. And it seems to get dimmer the closer you get to the city. Like it's not like dark. There's some light. But it's like there's a, a like cloud coverage that you can't see, and it's just grey. It's yeah, it's grey and dreary. Like my soul. Yes. I look at the sea. I look at Juto. <laughs> mm. yeah, I'm looking at me. <laughs> well. I just wrote Strad with lots of exclamation points. Strad. Fuck. Can I get my PHP back? Don't even ask. This is mine. Trot. But that's Trot. You've not heard of Strad. I don't know much about the actual. Not He's got an entire book to himself, dude. Yeah. Is that the curse of? It is yeah. the curse of Strahd. Yes. Available Strahd. now. Oh, yeah. Curse of fame. I think we're actually selling it on the Yogg's Castle. Uh, maybe not anymore. Um, I think it might have sold out. But yeah, yeah. maybe. Store.yogg'scast.com. It might be there. It, it might be there. Um, uh, yeah. Pretty horrible. You can see this from the distance. Um, okay. Elora, you so notice that there is two... a large. Um, a murmuration of crows that fly overhead and its pattern okay. kind of swifts and swirls, f- flies over the city. You can kind of hear their cores echoing over the open, empty. Like, it's also silent, like, it's very eerily quiet. So you can just hear this like, in the background. Let's do this. Let's do it. Let's go. That's what you There's mean. Two, Let's scale the wall. I'll really the information that there are two people who. Are very Two large strong undead, undead presences. Figures, yeah. I Easy. You actually, I think you get the location. One of them is in the clock tower, um, and one of them seems to be uh, in another part of the city. Okay. So we just need to go in around the back. The clock tower seems like the last place we should go. Just as an FYI, if someone's it's overlooking fine. the city, that's where they're going to want to be. Let's not go through the gates. Easy. Let's pick another tower around the side of the walls. Would you scale it? Hop calm, over. Calm, just, just calm down. Calm down. Think about it. We that can't rush into it. Oh, okay. It's gone. Good. Uh, <laughs> what was oh. it? Uh, I was basically psyched up for a few days. Okay. I well, tried more when it's a fuck with you guys. I cast so many spells. Gonna um, so you said there was a, a, a living presence inside the city. There's still some living, but not a very large number. Do you know There's where? There's mostly undead. Can you Can locate? I sense where that living presence is, if, if it's all together? Uh, mainly in the lower sections of the city. Um, you would really? get a rough estimate, say, estimate, estimate that it's maybe... Because you kind of saw Greybell when it was actually a thriving city. Um, it had a large population. Maybe like a quarter of that. 25%, 20%. So by lower, you mean yes, the outer, outer ring. Outer ring. Um, I don't know if we've got a decent shot on the map, but I, I need to draw a little city map. <clears throat> city. Um, I don't know if Steve will be able to cut to it because it is a bit far out. Far out. Far out. Boom. Grey bell. <laughs> so, I might be able to zoom into it yeah. on the camera. Shall I do that? Mm, Steve, no, there yeah. you go. You can do it digitally. It's That's just to give you a vague idea. So, uh, yeah, the central, this red red roof building is the clock tower. Um, you, can would know that in the inner section is uh, Black Hearth Manor, which is Karen's personal uh, um. manor quarters. Um, on the outside, this red building is the Guild Administration. Um, so where the Guild of, the t- Merchant's Guild of Talisval, they operated like their kind of like headquarters. And then the rest is mainly uh, buildings. Um, you don't know what these patches are, really. And we're sort of roughly like... Yeah, you're off the road. That way. Yeah. Um, hmm. If we can scale the wall to the west as we approach, we can maybe get to the Guild Administration Hall. And there may be some humans there. Well, they've gone quiet to tell us about as well, I think. It's the There's a high chance that it's been taken over by whoever's in charge of the city. And whatever's left Anything living important, anyway. are potentially prisoners. Mm, or should we just go for some random 
housing them and see if there's people on the streets or in their houses hiding. They're in the lower city. It's a big city. So. But they could, under fear, see us and report us immediately. Hmm. Well, we can't just storm in, go to the clock tower and take out the big bad. I think we need some more information. I'll tell you what. I'll commune with the Vandra, say thank you for the offer. But let's just leave. <laughs> I mean... You would abandon your family so easily. It was a joke, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shit scared of this place. It's not got you a nice hear vibe. You Laura mainly, but anybody with a high passive perception. I'm pretty sure you hear like a faint howl of wolves coming from inside the city. Cool. Inside the city. Uh, I'm gonna grab my flashlight just in preparation because I don't like it. <laughs> I don't Same. like this place. It's a little like magical. It's gonna get dark. A little magical torch. Click, yeah. Click. Well, I'm not turning it on because yeah. it's not dark yet, but no, I'm not true. losing this thing, not now. Okay. I say we go to the administrative building. We can at least see when they got cut off, if they received anything from Talisval. It is a good place to start. I worry that the important buildings are the ones that will, will be the worst to go. I believe this entire city is the worst place to go. Yes, but we need if to they start are controlling, somewhere. if that's how they're controlling anything that goes out of the town and it's gone quiet, mm. where else would you suggest? Somewhere non-important. Like the little houses. Well, Surely we could investigate houses on the way to the administration building. We could come if in we can, if we at can this enter, tower. We can enter and head up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. See, what See what's on the wall. Like before Walk we go. The I mean, you're looking up at the walls. There's no guards. There's like you occasionally see like gargoyles from like the buildings or on the walls and things like that. But they're kind of dominant throughout Grey Bell. From that watchtower, we'll be able to scout the land below and see what's moving and make an assessment from there. Okay. It's about like. 5.30. Before it gets too dark, which it probably is. I don't think is. we should be out in the dark. I think that we need to work Maybe with daylight. Maybe we could rest outside its walls and then approach it in approach the morning. Approach it in the morning when it's the most light. Yeah, if you want to do that. Yeah. So that we get, because we're going to be approaching at evening. We should be away from the walls. Yes. Okay. Could we hold up in one of the farms nearby? Uh, yeah, I mean, how far do you guys want to go out? Like, you're just going to find one nearby, like... Somewhere hidden, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Just and secure. The nearest one's probably about a mile and a half away from the city. Um, you kind of trek out a little ways. You find an abandoned farmhouse. Um, this one looks like it might have been attacked, like the, the doors have been ripped off and things like that. But there's no, like, blood or anything on the inside. It just... The building looks like it's been torn open and things because like that. Because they drank it all. <laughs> we know your games. Not like looted, but... Attacked. Not looted, yeah, attacked. Ravaged. Okay, so you're going to rest there, yeah? Yes. So what are you guys doing? Like, um, can like just campfire, we, resting? Yeah, food? can we make it a bit secure as well? Like, just, you know, a couple of barricades and... Yeah. Oh, you know, what are you going to make them Just going to find, like, some furniture yeah, and some wood and stuff. Yeah, pushing furniture up okay. against entrance ways. Okay, yeah. And perhaps we should sleep in shifts. Can I keep an eye out for any animals nearby? Yeah. yeah. Like, we wolves and... Sleep mm -hmm. in shifts as well. Yeah, I'll... I'll so watch. yeah, who's going to take watches? I'll watch. So you can take watch for half because you need to rest the other half. So do you want to take first or second? I'll take first. Okay, and then how the rest of you want to do it? I'll take second watch, uh -huh. and in my watch I will cast magic circle, which lasts for an hour, uh -huh. and protect us from undead. Okay, so you cast that around you, yeah. So my watch is protected. Okay. Well, you could you <laughs> you can cast you that had. before you sleep. Oh, is it last only oh, an hour? Only lasts an hour. Oh, okay, yeah. And it's a minute casting time. So. Okay. All oh right. wait, it increases an hour for each slot level above third. So if we do it for the fifth level, it'll yeah, be two hours. Uh, three hours. Three hours, yeah. I'm probably gonna have a very restless sleep. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna be okay. aware. So here's what happens. Time. So you settle down to take a rest. You start breaking out some food, small fire that you try and keep it kind of covered and smokeless. Um, during Elora's watch, uh, give me a perception check. Sixteen. Sixteen. You're keeping an eye out for animals. You notice that the the nighttime 
gets extremely dark. You're kind of the one who's up when the actual sun fully goes down. Um, and you're kind of looking out, watching out for these animals. And you don't, you see movement, but you're not sure if it's just kind of the light playing tricks on your eyes. But you do begin to hear this kind of dirge song, like a woman singing. Um, it's faint, but you can just hear it echoing from the city. Um, and it's this haunting melody um, that kind of just drifts and echoes over the city itself. Um, every hour, the, the bell does chime as well. Like on um, the hour, you hear like a faint ding, ding, ding from the uh, Grey Bell Tower. Um, and yeah, you just kind of watch, um, looking up, peeking out the windows. Um, Spoopy. As you hear this. Um, you finish your watch, you get up, cast Magic Circle, uh, perception check from you as well, please. It's going to be a natural 20. Well, it's an 18, 18. plus a 4. Even 22. Okay. Nice. So. I see everything. You, in this kind of cramped in, you know, farmer's house that you've put barricades and things around, you watch as a pack of big grey wolves with red eyes that glow in the dark slowly are prowling and coming towards the farmhouse. I'm going to shuffle everyone awake, putting my hand over their mouths as okay. I do that. So you shuffle everyone awake. Um, yes, um, you don't regain, uh, your spell slot is gone, but, um, and what did you cast in commune today? So that's gone as well still. You haven't recovered that back yet. There's really big wolves with red eyes approaching. Red eyes? Yep. Uh, really big grey wolves. Could I... I suppose they're beasts, so they're my favourite enemy. Ah, uh, you can make a perception check. Given what we know about werewolves, do we? Yeah, do we know if there are any kind of? Can we have a look at the wolves and see if there's anything? Perception checks for the series. Different. Cam's the only one that's seen them so far. 20, 26. 22. Yeah, you all see them. <laughs> so you kind of peer out, um, and yeah, you scan sort of around, and Cam points them out, and you can see them. They're trying to be stealthy. They're actually like sneaking up, like hunting and they're kind of prowling up um, onto either side of the, the farmhouse, two on each side. Um, these four kind of big, thick, grey-furred wolves with red eyes. Um, they look more natural. They don't look like the, the hybrid forms um, that you saw uh, the so, Frostwalkers mm. take and things like that. They just look like normal wolves, as far as you know. And they look like they're stalking up to the... Yeah. Uh, How close are they right now? You've got, so you've got like maybe 12 seconds before they're like at you. How close are they? Um, at the moment, they are they're going half speed, so they're 50 feet away. I could, I could create a very loud noise to scare them off. I think they know we're here. They know. Well, they but know you here. could scare them off, yes. But then we'd also alert a lot of people. Oh, I had an advantage on that stealth check, that was silly. No, I could I cast animal uh, friendship. I don't think they're friendly. I think there's something wrong with them. It would make them friendly. Okay, that's all the com like. You can't have a full conversation unless, like, if you want to do something, what are you doing? I'm just gonna prepare myself to attack. Okay, so if what if what how what are you preparing for? If anything comes into the barn, I'm going to summon a spiritual guardian. Okay, I am gonna through. Is there any like open area of the roof? Um, uh, the roof, not really, because there's a second floor, but there are windows that have been broken and smashed and things like that. And the door, the actual main doors, you barricaded with, like, a fallen over bookshelf and, like, some barricades that Juto did. But okay. that's well, the only door that is there. Through some kind of gap, I'd like to fire a bolt, like, almost directly up, to, so that it would land, I guess, the opposite side of the, um, of the wolves to us. Mm -hmm. And then that arrow is a thundering arrow. Mm -hmm. so okay. So make loud. an attack roll. Loud, 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 loud. Come on. Uh, that's um, 19. Okay, so you watch as Reynard twinge. What are the two of you doing, anything? I'm going no, to ready, no. but not. No, I don't. What are you readying? To do what? As and in. when? Readying is you have to set a thing that you're going to do. I'm going to see what happens when he does his kablamo mm -hmm. thing. And when that goes off, you are going to... Cast Animal Friendship. 
on the first wolf you see. In the closest, yeah. Sure, that's perfect. Elora? Oh, I can do that as well. Oh, if anything, if one of them comes in, I'll cast Blight on one of them. Okay, that's perfect. Ready action. So, what happens is you hear the <laughs> thunder, um, and then the wolves just get up and sprint, and they just run towards the building. You see them <laughs> sniffing the air. They don't seem to be phased by the noise. Um, and they just attempt to burst in through like the broken windows and through the barricade. Um, so I'm gonna make Good four strength job. checks first. I, I would at least distract them for a second rather than. I don't think we were getting out of it. Right. So two of the wolves who are trying to claw through the windows don't quite fully get in, but they, it won't take them long to just rip their way through. Two of them smash down the barricades that you put in the front and they burst into this small kind of farmhouse. Your ready to actions go off. Um, so you're going to. Got in. This. Guardian, Blight, and then you're going to try and cast Animal Friendship. Um, you cast Animal Friendship, do so, and I will make a save. But they have advantage. <coughs> the spell does not take effect, I'm afraid. Um, you try and reach out with the DOS loot. Um, Wisdom saving throw? Yeah, I made it. I rolled 19. Um, and you reach out with the music to try and calm them and, and you know, set them at ease. But you can tell that there is a, like a, a bloodthirst. They are desperate to kill. Okay. When they pass through my magic circle, does any effect take place? No. Undead? No. Okay. They are beasts. Beastie beasts. Nice. They're not undead. Thanks. Okay, okay. what does um, Guardian... Guardian Faith, so anything that enters within 10 feet of it for the first time does a deck saving throw. Okay, but they entered first, then you conjured it technically, so it won't affect till their next turn. Oh, okay. So you're not readying it? Wait. Yeah, Your really trigger think. is them entering, and then you go, oh, and then it yeah, springs okay. into life. So it, on the next turn, though, it will affect them. Oh. Right? Constitution save and throw. This is against one that's burst in. That's a 18. Ah, yes. Half damage. Damage. Fuck you, wolf. Uh. Well, damn. So this kind of ramshackle farmhouse, there's a stairwell leading up. Um, and then the room is basically just split into two. You have like a kitchen and then sort of like a dining, sort of like living areas. 32, um, so half of 32. Is 16. 16. So you watch as um, the necrotic energy, uh, it seems even less effective. Yeah, great. Um, the, uh, the necrotic energy that normally blight kind of sucks the way the life force off, it kind of almost seems to like bleed off and doesn't quite take grip on this wolf as it should. Um, and it kind of just sets this deep set growl. That's going to be initiative, everybody, please. Raps. Oh, Ooh! 21. 21 for Cam. Elora? 14. Ooh, Reynard? Uh, that's 23. 23. Shoot out. Six. Is that six there? Son of a gun. Oh, I you roll one. <laughs> uh, no, I rolled a two. What's Am your I? dex modifier? I got four initiative. What's your dex modifier? Five. Dex your initiative is plus is five. Seven. Yeah. But just for future reference, you have an extra plus one initiative. Um, very nice. I would like to use primeval awareness, please. You're okay. aware. You are aware. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I can communicate. I have an innate ability to communicate with beasts, and they recognize me as a kindred spirit. Yeah. Ooh. Favorite enemy, boik. Um, <laughs> and I can... So I can uh, communicate a simple idea to it as an action. I can read its basic mood and intent. So I know its mood and intent is to kill, kill me. Yeah. Um, I can learn its emotional state and whether it's affected by magic of any sort. It is affected by magic um, and it is controlled. It's controlled? Oh. Mm -hmm. It's been sent to kill you. Um, do you speak to them? Oh, they know we're here. What's, yeah. um, what's its short term needs? It's short term to kill okay. you. And, kill um, <laughs> What actions but, can I well, take? Do what the master says. It's in short term need. Okay, and what actions can I take to persuade it not to attack? I mean, override its master's control somehow. Okay, well, in, in that case, I'm gonna yeah, just communicate with one of the ones outside. Okay, it's like scrambling at the window. It's like literally pulling itself in. And I'm gonna tell that. <laughs> to I'm gonna try to tell it to turn on the other one that's attacking the window, and. Attack that one instead. Persuasion with disadvantage. Okay. This is going to be very difficult. There is a magical control at work. Oh. 14. 20. It's not going to be enough. What? It's 
I mean, yeah, this is an incredibly difficult thing you're trying to do. The, these Stop, there is bitch. work. At, there is dark forces at work you don't know about. Unfortunately, you're like, but the, as you're like trying to communicate to it, it's like looking at you, and you can read this thing's language. Like, this is this, this isn't a, a fully natural wolf. There is dark magic at work here. Yeah. Um, um. There is a hunger that is beyond just wanting like an animal's hunger. Um, and it seems to be very focused on, yeah. Killing Vampires! Uh, Vampire well, wolves! You know, it's pretty much going to be your action, yeah. And my bonus action is to Hunter's Mark, one of the two that's Entered into in. the building, yeah. okay. Yeah. So on the ground floor, the first two. Uh, Cam Buckland. Cam Buckland, I guess I'll do my Guardian of Faith now. You've already done it. Is You've it summoned up? it, but it's, the damage won't take place because they were already in the area. Okay. So that doesn't damage. cost. Yeah. Okay, in which case, I will try and dispel magic. Okay. One of them. Okay. Cast dispel magic. Yeah. What level are you casting it at? Fourth. And what benefit does that? Ten have? plus the spell's level, so fourteen is the DC. The check would be a. Which well, you make the check. I make it. You cast your wisdom modifier. Thirteen. It's not. Yeah, you kind of throw out this magic to try and break whatever's on them, but it seems to not necessarily be a spell that's being cast on them. It's almost something within them. Um, maybe some sort of curse, like a, a full-blooded curse, something in their blood, maybe. Bonus action, spiritual weapon. Sha! Nine plus eight, apparently. Are you going for the one that um, Elora tried to blight? Yes. Okay. Seventeen. Uh, yeah, that hits easy. Hmm. Well, four, eight, eight points. A radiant damage, really radiant. So radiant. So, as you're fighting these things, you can hear this song in the background, like this very faint music. Um, the radiant damage doesn't seem to be as strong. The light of the Guardian of Faith is dimmer than it should normally be. Oh, no. Oh. Well, shit. So, all over me. Um, that so is Cam Buckley's go. This, that was Elora. a fourth, oh, God. and the spiritual weapon. Was a third. Plan oh, was radiant. Oh yes. I mean, it, it worked. Exactly. It just was not as strong as you might have expected it to be. Uh, so but it seems like they know that we're here already, anyway. No. <laughs> wow. Just no. <laughs> just no. <laughs> um, yeah, Mark, get told. Just no. Just no. They don't know. <laughs> well, they don't know we're here. Sure. Why not? Nobody uh, wants to actually have a fun game. So you just want to win all the time. Yeah. I will... Uh, blah, 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 blah. So... The ones outside, I could cast Call Lightning. Cause it's, it's they are They're semi-inside. They're like in the windows. They haven't okay. quite fully made well their then. way through I'll, I'll do my original plan and cast Moonbeam on the one that's trying moon to come in the window. Dot so, yeah, it's a large creature, so the Moonbeam basically completely surrounds it. Um, and you can begin sizzling down. That affects them on their turn, right? Yes. yes. Large take place immediately. They are they are large. They are, these are huge, huge like direwolves. Yeah, size of a direwolf. Yeah, for sure. Um, Cam Buckland, how much damage does your guardian thing? Is it a saving throw I make? It is the a guardians. <coughs> wisdom. I think it's a twenty radiant damage usually. Okay, so one dex. Passes. Sorry, dex. Oh, dex. Okay. Uh, well, one passed and one failed still. Twenty. Radiant damage so, on a failed save. Okay, so he's going to take that amount, and then the other one is going to take that amount. Um, again, the, the radiant energy does not seem as bright and as effective as you perhaps expected and slash wanted it to be. And then the Moonbeam one deck save as well. Oh, it's a constitution oh, save. Oh, constitution, it fails. So it's going to take... 14. Uh, four, uh, 24. 24 radiant, yes? Radiant. Okay. Again, the moonbeam also seems Fine. to be does something dimmer. at least. It does still hurt it, and you can hear them sort of like, like growling and snarling as they're being burned, but it's not quite. Something's as affecting my glowing um, stuff. The two inside the building, uh, one is going to charge towards you, one charges towards Elora. The one that was trying to get in through the window bursts through, leaps on uh, Reynard, and then the other one. In fact, no, they're going to need to make checks <coughs> before they get through. 
that they do get through the windows, but they don't get to attack anybody. So that all four are now sort of like surrounding you as you're kind of around this camp that you've set up. Um, the two running towards you. Uh, one is going to try and attack you. Is Camp Magic Buckland. Circle still there? Yeah, it doesn't stop them. They're I not choose undead. a type. No, they are living. I walls. chose undead. Uh, eight to hit you. You leap out of the way as its jaws kind of snap <laughs> shut. Um, Elora, that is a twenty-two to hit you. Unfortunately, um, you are going to take do, 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 thirteen points of piercing damage. And then, could you make a strength saving throw for me, please? Grappling. Yeah, so you just throw this thing to the side. Like it tries to bear you to the ground. <laughs> it doesn't expect you to be as strong, but it still I'm bites its jaws strong. kind into you. Like, ah, and then it tries to drag you down, but you just throw it off. Um, the grape effect. The good stuff, the 10 HP, that's gone as well, yeah. right? Pack tactics. They have pack tactics. Uh, Juto. Oh, I forgot they had pack tactics. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thanks for It means me. that they get fucking advantage. advantage. If they're next to a friend. flanking. Juto. Uh, I would like to attack. Um, so, I which one is think. closest to me? Is the one that got blighted and? They're all within equal distance. Basically, they're surrounding you. So, basically, you're inside like a little farmhouse, and these four wolves have torn their way in, and they're now basically kind of stalking you. Kind of got you guys back to back. You Can really I pick moved. one that looks weakest? Uh, yes, there is one which has been more injured. Yes. Okay. The runt. I'm gonna. It's not really the runt. He's just the one that's been hit by the most spells at this point. 29 to hit? Yeah, that hits easily. <laughs> These things aren't super hard to hit, but they do look very tough. Uh, tough. 13 normal damage, mm -hmm. 5 radiant. So, yep, okay. So the first Gwandal strike, Clyte keeves in. Again, even the enchantment in your blade seems dimmer. But it still gets hurt though. It still does get hurt, yeah. The um, blade cuts through it, the Gwandal. Second attack. How do you do this? <laughs> this is a 5. 16. But. Still hits. <laughs> Neato. Uh, 13 again for the Guandao and two for Radiant. Um, and then I'd like to get. Second strike cuts in deeper. This one seems quite wounded. Like you've cut deep gashes into it. It's like. It's like limping around. Um, then I would like to go into. I can't decide. Fire at Earth. Fire at Earth. I'd like to go in. To Please make if a decision. They've surrounded. Um, Earth stance. Earth stance, two key points, and you drop yourself into a more defensive stance. Mm -hmm. um, Reynard, back at the top. Um, Reynard. This building, are they all? I guess are we all in, within like a? You're in like the main living room sort of thing. So yeah. a, they're all quite well packed together, like. Yeah. Within a twenty foot. Oh yeah. Twenty foot radius, yeah, because that's yeah. 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 That's um, oh yeah. He's gonna bring the pain. His radius half. I think so, yeah. Is it within a 10 foot radius? Uh, of a point the, No, the room's about. 20 feet The room's way. about 30, 30 feet wide. <laughs> <laughs> it's about 15 foot radius, so it's 30 foot wide, so. And they're within that? Mm, you could get three of them at a push. Take the three. Take the three before I'd he like changes his mind. Volley. Ooh. Volley. Okay. So What's I do? Pick a point, and within a 10 foot. Anything within 10 feet of that point. I can shoot that. Okay. Um, yeah. You can so make attack against three of them, yeah, for sure. Well, one is a 20, a natural. One's hit, and another is. I like how he tells me it's uh, a hit. 18. Hit. So, yeah, all three hit. Uh, so, these are your favorite enemy, correct, as well? So you so want to get plus two enemy. damage. Okay. Nice. I've got one D8. So the one with the Hunter's Mark on it. Yes. I'd like to that to be my first one, so that's got thunder damage on it. Okay. So you roll that up for me. Uh, uh, <laughs> He's like, I don't so normal, know. <laughs> so normal crossbow damage. D8. Uh, 14. 14. Now add Hunter's Mark, D6. 3. Now add Thunder. 17. Thunder, another 3. 20. Now add 2 for favoured enemy. Plus 2 for favoured enemy. And then, yeah. So 22. 22. That so that one, the first bolt strikes into this wolf, a big thunderous kind of boom. <laughs> And it staggers back by the force. The thunder damage has full effect. Um, and it kind of <laughs> like leaps back. And it's still alive. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Looks badly injured, but yeah. The second one is 12 damage. Second one, is this the, the very injured one or is this one of the one of the fresher ones? Uh, yeah, it's the more injured one. Okay. Um, so that's 12, no, 14 damage. With the hunter's mark, yeah. No, hunter's mark was on the other one. Oh, that's true. No, your favourite enemy you always get, sorry. I always get plus two. So you yeah, 14 was with the favourite enemy. 14 was favourite enemy, okay. 
So that one, you nearly put on Death Store. You can see it kind of like limping, blood is streaking out of it. It's kind of... Cool. Um, and then another 11 to the third one. Third most injured one, yeah. Um, so that's... Okay. I am marking off bolts, by the way. Yep, sweet. Yeah, because you've got five shots now and before you have to reload. Hit me with your best shot. Um, Are you done? I'm also going to... There's one right next to me, isn't there? Yes, there. there's four of them surrounding me, basically. I want to use... Can I use the hand axe? Yeah. And slash at that? Yeah. Um, oh, no, that'd be, a, that'd be a full attack, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, it would use an action, yeah. Well, in that case, I'll throw Axel okay. at the most injured one. Axel! Um, um, yep, so Axel can make an attack. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I might <I> miss! 14? <laughs> Still hits. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Yeah, wolves are aren't they? Uh, uh, extra, not high AC. Eight damage. Uh, it is cold. That one's very, very, very injured. Okay, uh, it's staggering good, around. Good, good. Um, Cam Buckland. I'm going to follow up Axel with spiritual weapon immediately on that yeah! one. Yeah. Oh, so that's a five. What plus you, you got plus eight. Thirteen. That's a hit. <laughs> oh. This is radiance. Ooh. Twelve. Twelve. That's enough. It's so that one. Force, the, oh, is it force? Oh, nice. So uh, the weapon sort of strikes through the creature. Does it look like the weapon? Uh, it looks like the axe that was given to. Oh, so like a the silvered hand axe. Yeah. So it kind of spins through the air, embeds into the creature's thing, and then pulls itself free. Yeah. The body slumps to the ground. As soon as it dies. Its body begins melting into thick black tubes oh. and blood, oh. like thick ichor. It just begins melting into the ground. That's not right. Um, the others begin howling and get very aggressive. Okay. That's More nice. aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I move the spiritual weapon? That was your bonus action. Can I move the spiritual weapon? You've already moved it to attack. Okay, fair enough. Um, I'm going to cast Shield of Faith on myself. Plus two AC. There you go. Uh, Elora? I am going to use my action to move my moonbeam. Mm -hmm. You bring uh, it inside. Can I put it on two at once? Yeah. If they're because yep. they're huddled there's, together. There's two on one side. Yeah. I'll put the I'll put the moonbeam. That's the least injured on... two though. Um, it doesn't matter. I'll put okay. it on those two. Yep. Better to get two then. Yeah. One. Okay. So you move that. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah, that was my action. So I'll just. Okay. Oh, it's an action to move moonbeam. Yeah, I think okay. it is. Okay. Does it work inside? Um. Yeah. Dex saving throws all around because I've got Guardian of Faith is still active, yes? Because it dealt how much damage does it can it? It's 50, isn't it? Uh, 20, uh, 60 is the total. So it dealt 20, it dealt 10, so it's done 30. So, so I make Dex saving throws for the others because yeah. they're still within 10 feet. So one's going to pass, the other's going to pass, the other's going to fail. So two pass, one fails. So it would do another 30, it? another 30, but that would only be enough to affect two of them. So it would affect the one who failed first. So he's going to take 10, uh, uh, and then the other one will 40, fail, and then the other one takes 5. 50. No, no, as in, that's ha I'm halving it. It's dealt with full damage. Then that's it, then. The yeah. Garden of Faith dissipates. But then Moonbeam. Constitution. Constitution. Those are two fails. But nice. it's still halved. So basically, all of these, like, this glowing radiant guardian is, like, dishing out this this light, which is not as strong as you want it to be, but it's still like, Swing they're burning around. away from it. And then 16. the moonbeam is now pummeling two of them. 16 total? Mm. Yep, okay. The trick is to combo different types of light at them to make up for the dullness. I feel like it's almost like an epileptic. Okay, <laughs> like, yeah. so it's a crazy watching this, right now. the body Strating. of their fallen friend, like dissolving, the three wolves howl at the same time, perfectly coordinated, almost in harmony with each other and then they kind of look up, their eyes flash red, their jaws unhinge, and they blast three cones of kinetic energy catching all four of you on the inside. What? All three oh. of them are gonna do it. So that's uh, three deck saving throws from each of you, please. Uh, from each huh? Evasion. Yes, you still have to make the saving throws, but if you succeed, you take no damage. <laughs> do I, if, if I fail one, do I have to so, succeed the other two as well? Make, I, right, I'm okay. gonna do it. So first saving throw, fail. 15. 15. 21. 21. What was your first saving throw, Tom? 10. 10. 20. Okay. Uh, you three succeed the first ones, so you take no damage. You're going to take half from the first one. You're taking full. Next saving throw? 18. 
In fact, actually, let's do this. In, I'll do this. I'll roll the damage so that it's easier to track. So. What's I the think DC? I, I so passed two and failed one. Actually, uh, it was 22, so, my first one. So that's going to be. So you're going to take 17 necrotic for the first one. Uh, and then you're going to take uh, eight. eight. The two of you, you take nothing because you have evasion. You just backflip up into the air. Second deck saving throw. 22. 18. Another 10. 20. Okay. <laughs> You're, going, you're taking half, you're taking nothing, you're taking full. Uh, Reynard, that's going to be 19, so 9 for the two of you. Third deck saving throw. 19. 17. Fail. 19. Oh, fail. 16. Okay, this time you succeed, you two fail, you still take nothing. <laughs> oh, that was a bad one, 16. <laughs> cool. Great. 22 oh, necrotic sake. damage to you two. 11. Um, as they basically lot, catch and they hit each other, but it doesn't seem to. Ow! They just. <laughs> Wolf lasers! Is that enough force to. And it's, as it's like a black, kind of like choking cloud that kind of comes out and just. Uh, uh, necrotic. Everything is wrong. Was there um, one next to me? <laughs> huh? Was there one next to me? Well, yeah. They're all kind of like around you. I want to make a reaction to hit that, that one that's right next to me. Sure. Uh, I've taken a shit Because ton. that's what I can do. I never do damage to Laura. <laughs> it's real bad. And it's real, real bad. damage, it's not yeah. fucking shit. fake shape I mean, form damage. I mean, we have been a bit dumb mm. and just clustered together. Yeah. Well, uh, we're in a house. Um, yeah. We expect to be attacked. So, yeah, I can... Take it all large. Lot. It is a large creature, isn't it? Yes, so it I want is to a attack large it creature. With the silver hand axe. Okay, with the silver hand axe. So use axle uh, weapon profile, basically. Oh, mm. huh, okay. Uh, 11. 11's not enough. You go to swing it, you pull it out, but this thing leaps back and you're kind of like stammering, you're stuttering from the damage. Also, you're like blasted back. Yeah, you're just like, ah! <laughs> uh, as you struggle to swing. Juto. I would like to attack. There's three of them. They all look, they're fairly injured, all three of them. Okay. They've taken wounds, cuts, burns. Uh, I'll start at the top, just pick one. Okay. Oh, natural one. So the first why you're kind of still spinning in the air from your incredible evasion as you land. The first blow, you just go a bit too high. Second attack. Uh, 12 plus 11, 20 Hits. something. <laughs> uh, 11, 19, 20, Yep. And two radiant. So one radiant. Uh, mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I would like to flurry. Yep. Uh, so you need to attack first, mate, don't forget. Yeah, that's what that is. Is it D20? Oh, it looked like D8 to me. What's 9 plus 8? Enough. <laughs> 17. My yeah. brain just really went blank there. Is that hit? So it's an unarmed strike with this one. Uh, 10 damage. Okay. Uh, I'm having you basically hit them in order, so I'm just looping the damage around, basically. Because okay. you're just striking it, whichever one. Second, uh, second unarmed strike. 12. 12's not enough, that one actually. You hit the wolf, but the thick fur just kind of absorbs the blow um, as it staggers back. She doesn't boot the snook. She doesn't boot the snook. Uh, Reynard, Ferrohorn. Uh, oh, um, can I... Uh... Oh, crap. So I've got one bolt left. I've got two shots that I can do on my turn. Can one shot and then reload? I think I said it's an action to reload, so no, you won't be able to do that. It would be your action to attack, and then you'd have to... That's fine. Uh, in that case, I want to shoot with the Hunter's Mark one. Okay. Uh, that one is dead. Okay. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. No, oh. it's not. Well, I... 16 to hit. Um, that hits. Yep. 1d8, 2d6. Uh, 1, 7, 11, 16, 18. Is that with favored enemy, yeah? Yeah. Yep. The bolt thudders in, you hear a thunderous poof, but it lurches back. Still alive. None of us. These um, things seem unnaturally tough. Okay, uh, and I will also. You watch as like the blood pours out their wounds. It actually seems to like be super thick and congealed, and it just drips really slowly, as if it doesn't want to leave the body. Oh. Sweet. Um, what next? Okay, and, and then, then I'll... you could axle with bonus yeah, action. Yeah, axle into the roll. side of it. Three. So axle. Uh, yeah, that's fourteen plus. Yeah, that hits. Yeah, that hits. Uh, Are you going for the same one, the hunter's mark one? Yeah. I don't get hunter's mark. You axle, don't, but no. I'm just for me tracking damage. Seven. I'm Seven. Okay. Yeah, this cuts in. 
still standing. Jeez. Does a deep cut, but it's almost like it doesn't want to bleed the wound. I'm still standing. Uh, also, could Cam I? Cam Buckland, it's your go. So are we? Sorry, are we downstairs? You are currently downstairs in the living area. Could yeah. I just get away from one of them? So if yes, they... they will get a tax opportunity, but you have a disadvantage. disadvantage. Yeah. So two of them will get disadvantage uh, tax opportunity. That's a miss. And that is going to be, I'm assuming, 13, isn't it? That's a miss. Yeah. So you leap away and you're going to run up the stairs. Well, I'll sort of just get to the, the stairs landing. If I need There's to. like a landing that looks down, but you can only see one of the walls now. The other two are kind of hidden. Or could I just stand halfway up the stairs so I could still. Yeah, see well, you'd, you'd see two, and then the other one is That's still fine. on the other side, so. Yep. Very good. Cam Buckland. Uh, spiritual weapon, the weakest. Yep. So you're aiming for the most injured, yes? 12 plus. Eight. Hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Yeah, I won't blink. <laughs> you bets. Twelve. Twelve radiant. Oh, force. No, force. Yeah. Okay. Very forceful. Yeah, that's uh, that's a nasty blow. Hand axe just chops in. Uh, and then I'm gonna cast. Thuds into its head. <laughs> Shit, this con- no spiritual weapon's not concentration. Spiritual so weapon. I'm gonna cast bane on the three remaining creatures. Bane! Charisma saving throw. What does that do? It means Ooh. it's gonna. They Fail. Can subtract D4 Fail. from their attacks. Fail. Ooh, cool. D4, I subtract D4, yes. From your attack rolls or okay. saving throws. Okay. Can someone please do the Bane voice? I was born in the darkness. <laughs> I'm also <laughs> Deckard Kane, the Heradric Cube. This will be painful. But you've created a legendary item. Heradric <laughs> Cube. <laughs> It's so distant. <laughs> um, Hello. So you cast Bane. Hello. Hey, Laura. Deckard oh, Bane. Can, can I? <laughs> Deckard Bane. Can I turn into a winter wolf? Good one. Yes. Please. It's um, weird. You're back. almost the same size and build as these. Really? Wolves. And is it? Or is their breath thing similar to maybe another thing oh, that I could say? It's really different. Oh, it's weird. Yeah. I'm oh, gonna right. use my cold breath. <laughs> As a winter wolf. You can catch, you can catch okay. two of them. Can I catch two of them? I will do that. DC 12 deck save. And they take a D4 off of it. So first one is a fail. Second one... That's still going to be a 16. So that'll pass. That's, uh, yeah, passes. So it will take so. half. So one takes full, one takes half. Oh, shit. Whoa. <laughs> 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 20, 22, 23, 23, 25, and then half of that for the other one. Okay, damn. <laughs> oh, damn. Cold damage. That's how you be a wolf. I'm a pretty a wolf too. Just. This is okay. subjective. I kind of like the dark ichor oozing from their wounds. Darkness. Turns me on. All three of them what? now look very badly wounded. Like the ice really has like weird. blistered their fur and their skin, but they're just relentless. They're just like. <sighs> Um, and they're snapping, howling. Uh, can somebody roll 3d6 for me? Sure. Tell me if you get it. No. 663. Six, six, okay. Can roll first, which is bad. Because uh, they both recharge. Two of them recharge, right. yeah. So two of them are going to basically project the same necrotic energy beam, but one of them doesn't. He's just going to manually attack. Um, and he will probably attack uh, Juto. So... Uh, one, two, three, you're not there anymore. So the three of you sure. basically make dex, two deck saving throws. I guess. Bane me? won't affect their yeah. saving throws, yeah. Me? No. Yeah, you still need to make it because if you roll a one, you'll still take half damage. I rolled a natural 20 on one and I failed the other. Okay. I rolled a 19. Thought, am I not being attacked by, oh, regular, being attacked by the regular one? You're still getting blasted by. Okay. Do you consider that cop? Or is that another one? No, I'd say that's pretty two solid. 19s. Two 19s, okay. 26. And then second one. 26. You take no damage, so you're going to take half, 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 you're going to take full half. That was a great roll. So uh, that's going to be 14, 20, 25 on the first one. 12. And then 12. Huh. And then Katie, take thinking? half on this one. Jeez. 21, so 11, uh, 10. 10. 10. Monk Another 10. Monk oh, it's not a hurt now. <laughs> They need to stop that. The necrotic and the Juto thing. one's just going to try and manually attack you. Doesn't hit you. <laughs> what did it roll? Uh, 11. 11. <laughs> and it is now your go. 
I would like to... They show no sign of retreating. They, like, even though they are super injured, they're really badly wounded, they are just continuing their I attack. don't think these wolves are natural. I'm I think there's something affecting them. Ignore Cam and go for whatever... All right. three of them look pretty bad. Okay. So first one. They'll probably hit. 20. Hits. <laughs> Math tonight. Eight! Ooh! Nice. Plus seven is fifteen. Math. Plus three radiant. So one. So sixteen. Six in total. That's enough. So one of them, the Guandao, <laughs> just pierces through the skull, pulls it out, it begins falling apart, dissolving again, the thick black blood-like oh. tubulars um, falling all over the floor. Still here. Thirteen plus eleven. Mono, okay? It's like that. Oh, oh. that's fucked up. Oh, that thing's <clears throat> Thirteen plus eleven to hit. Four. The ball. Yeah. Mm. Eight plus four radiant. So two, so ten. That's enough to kill that one as well. Oh, she's gonna <laughs> kill him blow spree. I would like to flare. Yep. Two unarmed strikes. Fourteen plus nine. First punch hits. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You hear like it's skull crack, but it's still l lumbering around on its feet. And then the roundhouse kick. Natural 20. You rip its head off with a roundhouse <laughs> kick. Just <laughs> kick it into the wall. <laughs> wow. Just splatters across the wall. Oh. Um, you did all that as you were still spinning from your evasion in the air. Like, and then you just land. Yeah. Uh, I think, can I make a constitution saving throw? A concentration check, you mean? Constitution. No. Oh, you can make a constitution. Oh, to see. I throw up. Okay, you throw up. There you go. Uh, I'm just kind of still like. Can we rest now? The fuck. I can't rest after that. There's black stuff everywhere. <laughs> All this tar like. Is it fade away? It, 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 it dissolves. It, it like, does. Dissolve. Very, it dissolves and it seeps into the boards and then it just kind of like. It leaves like a blood stain. Well, That's I think up. they might know that we're here. And they're being controlled, you say? They are being controlled by something. I Probably know that much. The big bad. The the biggest bad. The one that has all the power. Uh, whether they are Which able to. Kill four of his blood wolves. <laughs> <laughs> whether or not they are able to see through their eyes is something else. Yeah. Shush your mouse. I'm gonna do prayer of healing. <laughs> <laughs> prayer of healing takes ten, ten minutes, minutes to cast, but it's a three d eight plus wisdom healing. Two d eight plus your spell Two d eight plus healing modifier, but I'm gonna do it at third level. Are which we means resting an extra anyway? D8. Yeah. If you want to rest, if you're taking a full rest, yeah. You well, can we finish your full way. rest. Yeah, <laughs> you can just finish it. Carry on, right now. <laughs> Does it not matter that it's a short rest that we had before a fight? Technically, you would need rest. to restart a full rest, I believe. Yeah. Start now. Somebody will probably tell me that. I'm Eight hours from now. But yeah, you what? need to have a full rest, but uh, it is probably so that was just at some about nine, about one a.m. Two hours. It's about three in the morning. Okay, so eight hours, eleven a.m. Be nice and sunny. Be nice and sunny. To be fair, the sun would be approaching the highest in the sky, so it it's would be a day. good time in to go into hours. the city. Wait, what? Yeah, if we would be getting, we'd be going into the city about midday. If we did eight if hours. If we did eight hours. What, what health was I just want to know. I you never get the damage anymore. You 52 points of damage off of me. And how much HP do you normally have? 96. Fuck. <laughs> just over half. <laughs> just Don't like, worry. You're just so hard, I can't deal with it. I had eight points of HP left. Of that. Really? Yeah. Jesus. The I difference between the two of you. Because you took, took almost yeah, the same amount of damage. Though. I took 61 total. Yeah, so you barely mm. took a little bit more you than a lot. took 50. Just over half of mine as well. Guess who took no damage? Yeah, if I get invasion. It's all right, don't you worry, I've got plans. Yeah, yeah. the thing yeah. is, yeah. look, it's the one time no, that I've it's, actually it's, managed this. That was, Come on. that was like the perfect Juto yeah. thing of like, hit it's me with your dex space saving throws. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In two years, that is the one encounter. Let me have it. Hit me with um, your dex shot. Are we going to rest <laughs> or are we going to. I don't know, are you resting? I am reloading. Oh. Is there anything we can do? Are you really hurt? You're really hurt too. I'm pretty hurt. All three of us are really hurt. I so, about half damage. I kicked a wolf's head off. I mean, we're still playing with my original rules, which is you'll get full HP back on a full rest. Yeah. Which we're doing anyway. Don't get used to that on any future High Rollers campaigns. Okay. <laughs> so. uh -huh. Which is coming soon. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Ish. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. we'll, see we'll see how this arc goes. It might be coming sooner than we think. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole party dies. They're all dead! <laughs> Thank you, Strahd. Good day. <laughs> no, it's not Strahd. It's Karen Blackhurst. 
And Strahd. And Strahd. With the power of Strahd. Either way. Um, wow! Um, yes, we're going to rest. Um, so you take I'm a long rest. ask the group if there's anything that we can protect this place with to deter those kind of creatures. I mean... No. It's on me, right? <laughs> I don't really have. I, like, I mean, all you really did is put barricades up, yeah. which they did. It's, it's, it's slowed sort of them. Bad. Yeah, it slowed them a bit. I'm I could um, choose it, fiend for magic circle instead. Could you? Well, it would only last a few hours. Beast. Yeah. yeah, it was Fiends still a wolf. Demons. It was still an animal. Oh, yeah. I can. Uh, I can primeval awareness. Um, Wait, yeah. Do you know what it was? Basically, constantly. It's a beast. Well, it's a beast. Yeah. Well, while you're so conscious. So when though, you right? do that. You are aware that there is, yeah, there is a large number of beasts. You're not quite sure. Can you, do you know what types of beasts? I think it does, you uh, know, don't you? I'm I, pretty sure it does. Um, yeah, I, wolves, I know. rats, crows and bats. And wolves, they're rats, kind of everywhere. <laughs> um, the bats and crows fly around almost constantly, yeah. um, kind of around the city mainly. The rats Surveillance. are mainly focused in the city, but there are packs of wolves that roam around within a three mile radius. Okay. Oh, I see. Well, I could take a short rest and, um, like, just... Guard us? Yeah. Ring the alarm. Whoop, whoop. That's yeah. very honourable, due to your uh, you. Yeah, you would have got six hours of sleep, so you'll be all right for a while. Yeah, because yeah. my key points reset on a short, on short rest. rest but, but mentally as well, you've had enough sleep to be like, yeah, I, I probably don't need to sleep that much. I haven't had any sleep. Yeah. Oh, me neither. Yeah. It was on my watch. You'd had attacked. four hours sleep. Yeah, you had you'd been asleep I'd, for like an hour. And I'd then had he an hour of sleep. Like, so I had the last amount, the most amount of rest. As you only need four, though. I only need four. Well, I need to be doing nothing, though, for the other four. Sleep. Yeah, that's the difference. Sleep, so much she still needs eight hours. Oh, so, yeah. Long rest. Um, I, I will. I can, rather than a long rest, I can short rest and take one half. Mm, you should probably. Well, I can still heal up with the short. I'm going to go upstairs. You guys can do what you want. Onto yeah. the landing so and sleep up there. Yeah, I mean, there's rooms up there. There's like bedrooms I'm going to go into stuff. a bedroom up there. Yeah, there's bedrooms with beds. Before I just chose the oh. floor. I'm going to yeah, barricade well, we'll more stuff. Then. I'm going to barricade more yeah, stuff. Yeah, you can yeah. build up more barricades and things can like that. Ran? Are you doing it like, yeah, like, so you just want to barricade and stuff? There's not really anything of value. Uh, value. There's not even like bed sheets and things. There is just a bed frame with like a straw mattress kind of thing on it. If there's um, a wardrobe, you can put that in front of the door and stuff I'm like that. I can put that in front of the window. Okay, yeah. And then drag something like a drawer against mm -hmm. the door. Yeah, there's like a trunk. Yeah. Can I watch from somewhere high? Like, can we get up into a up into a bedroom and look out? Like the, there's no glass; they're all kind of like wooden shutters, but you can kind of peer through them and stuff like that. Can we not use any lights or fire? You can douse lights. Yeah. How many other packs did you I see of wolves? Huh? How many other packs of wolves? I mean, you're aware of maybe like five or six roaming around. I mean, packs like or packs, individual. yeah, five or six packs they of are multiple wolves. Quite clearly, uh, roaming around as defence for the city. Surely another pack will just come round. I mean, you don't know how those. We shall have you, to take so. a chance. Right. I suggest you three rest. I can't. I, will keep watch. I can't fight. I'll cast past that trace on us all. How long does that last? Not that long. But Might be long enough. Do not an worry. Hour. I okay, will keep now. watch. Okay. Oh, actually, I guess in like, what, six The thing is, is a stealth check can be you like, getting rid of like, your sense and like, clearing away tracks and things like that. That is part stealth check. And Pass Without a Trace enhances your ability to do that. It like, lets you lead you what to do with stuff like that. So if you want to cast Pass Without a Trace, everyone can make a stealth check for me. Plus 10 extra bonus, plus 10 on top of your normal bonus. 26. 26. Uh, 32. <laughs> that's, that's absurd. 32. You okay. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you begin doing things like removing your scent. You actually get like oil and water and you start like garlic. wiping things down. You use some of the garlic if you want, you can rub that on things. Um, and you right. generally try and. Uh, do that. You make sure that the shutters are down and you have no lights. You don't. You rely on your night vision. I'm gonna try really hard to get the torch off of Reynard so he doesn't put it on in the middle of the night because he hates the dark. He does hate the dark. I'm not giving it to him. <laughs> don't put that on. I'm not. I'm not turning it on. Don't switch it on. Because I need a light light. Uh. <laughs> no. Do not forget the enchantment on your clothes. Oh, they're not super bright, are they? It's very dull. Hmm. <laughs> little <laughs> tiny little glow. Um, with thick, with something covering the window shutters, you don't think much light will get out. Um, and yeah, you guys take a long rest. And do you feel reassured? Feel so due to your actions, 
Nothing seems to find you. Interesting. In the morning, I'm going to cast aid. Okay. <laughs> and give everybody temp HP. Give Make a note of that, guys. Um, how much? Uh, how much? I believe it's uh, five plus it's five per level, isn't it? You spend on you the level. Yeah. Do I have to super speed it up? To do. I'll do it level three, so you get ten HP. Yeah, ten Actually, temporary HP. Write that down on your HP because we are right? going to be finishing up now. Yeah, so okay. three people. Yeah. yeah. So me. Does temp HP stack? Not Laura. No. Juto. You always Reza. get the, the the higher amount of temp HP takes precedence. Yeah, I just can't um, remember how inspiring leader works. Yeah, it's you get the highest amount. So if you can give more with inspiring up. leader, it saves cam spell slot. You have to be inspiring to begin with, Reynard. Oh. <laughs> I think I think the inspiring leader is more than ten. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure think it, it might like, be 15, isn't it? I think it's or 13 or something like that. Because it would save camera spell slot, and it affects all of you as well, Inspiring Leader. It's a yeah, really it good feat. Me. It's a cool feat. I love it. It's a cool I love it. Feat. What's it doing? Yeah. We are going to end the. We're going to read donations because Steve's got to grab his train and um, we'll make sure he gets that. So we're going to finish up now. We're going to read donations. We're going to try and rattle through those as quickly as possible. Um, and then we're going to get on out of here. But hopefully you enjoyed this first session back of High Rollers. We will, of course, be back next week to continue um, well, well, these well, dark, dangerous events. We're all the dead. toughest yet. Hey, yes. what's next week? It's Tom's birthday next hey. week. Hey. We need to get you okay. 18. Hey. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could pass You're me. like 28? 26. Oh. Fuck off. Young. Young. Young in. So it's Tom's birthday next week, so we'll probably bring a cake. Please oh, tune in. Because you for... forgot for mine. <laughs> I didn't get one for mine. We got burritos. Yeah. I'm just, we got you really something. We got we got birthday. Birthday. I didn't Waffles. get a cake for it. They were great. We, could get we did something. I literally went and bought myself a cake on the weekend because I was like, I just went for my birthday and nobody got me cake. Got your presents. Don't make the same mistake for mine. Yes. Yes. yes, you I also you got you a present. <laughs> Nina and, you and got... I got you a present. Yeah, they actually, yeah. <laughs> With your Where's involvement, right? Presenter? I've got no clue. Right, we're going to read to Nina. Uh, N donated. Thank you very much. N donated a $30. Wow, thank you. Uh, Nightjar donated. Thank you very much. Miss you guys. We missed you too, Nightjar. Welcome Aww. back. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to rattle through a bunch. Of yeah, just we'll do, do a bunch. Sukinia Su Su uh, donated. Hey, high-ish rollers. I started following at the beginning of Uncharted Territory, and since the start of September, I've binged the entirety oh of the show. Ouch. First time I'm able to donate. Cheers, and I hope you're all well. Well, wow. thank you for following us from Uncharted Territory. That's I'm glad you enjoyed dedication. it. Thank you very um, much. Orenve donated. Thank you very much. And then Sky donated. I started watching two years ago and it got me and my friends into D&D. Role playing my character gave me the confidence to come out of uh, to some of them as trans and thank me, they accept the woman I am. I'm, you guys are such an inspiration and I love you all. Well, I'm glad that we can awesome. help Sky. Awesome. Yay. Chris Trot. Bo, maniac, donated a hundo and one. Whoa. Whoa. Holy crap. Thank you. Hi, hi, rollers gang. It's th minus three, minus Whoa. 16 for you civilized folk. Whoa. At noon here. Um, thanks for giving me an excuse to hang out on the couch under an Afghan. Afghan, yeah. It's like oh, a. Oh, yeah. Big rug. Thank you. Oh, no, it's just a rug. No, Happy just a 2018. Rug. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you very much. Very thank kind. you, Bowmania. Very generous. My miss donated. One of my friends is away next week, so we won't be playing tabletop games for a while. Fortunately, after that, we'll be back to Tabletop Weekly. Uh -huh. Hint, hint. Hint, hint. hint. Nice. Very Hello. good. Thanks. I'll do a couple more. Yeah. That quiet guy donated. Howdy, y'all. Just celebrating the first high roller stream of the year and the first one I've caught live with my first ever donation. Thank you very much. Keep doing what you're doing and wish me luck going back to university tomorrow. Love you guys. Good luck. Good, Good luck. luck. You'll be fine. Do you want um, one more? Dancing on fire donated a harp hundo. Oh, 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 bloody hell. Yeah, you're back. I missed you guys. I hope you all had a wonderful holiday and may the new year bring you all happiness. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's going to bring me hookers and blow, hopefully. Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Mini Wilson 33 has donated. I binge watched all the previous streams in a month and a half, only to find out the next stream was going to be the non canon Christmas special. <laughs> I love watching you guys, and all the laughs are awesome. Keep it up, beauties. Hopefully, well, you enjoyed see, the madness. Yeah, yeah. Extra enjoyment, it's fine. You were just earlier than the rest. Uh, Zephyr012 said, First game I played yesterday, first game I run this afternoon, and the first high rollers this evening. Uh, it's been a great weekend. I was stuck working late the night before the Christmas special and slept through it, but hey, I'm Aww. here now. Oh, you can catch up on y'all's live noise. Yeah. Lots of new viewers today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Poison Music has donated saying hi from Singapore. Woo! Woo! Love you guys, and I caught up with everything in two weeks Jeez. just binge watching. Wow. Tom is on a big chair. <laughs> OMG. I love Milo, the drink too, Kim. Literally named my cat after a drink. 
Chris, please don't kill Cam. Hi, Katie. And Mark, OMG, my friends, and I love your DM skills. Super nice, thank you. Well, nice, yeah. sure. Oh, nice. Uh, Frankie Quinn, I've gotten way too into D&D for someone who still can't find a way to actually play it, and you're to blame. So you might as well have some of the money I have left over Aww. after spending all my Christmas money on dice. Check in the Aww. High Rollers Discord, because a lot of people organize yeah. games in there. They Online play with the Roll20. Yeah. 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 Well. You're subconsciously playing with us yeah. in our world. Yeah. You're part of our universe. Let's talk You're to one you. of the dead ones. Tom, <laughs> carry it's on. the Nova Keen. Uh, super excited uh, to be watching live after spending the last few months pouring all my free time into catching up, though it saddens me that I will have no more high rollers to binge on my days off. Oh. Uh, and Kim, that is one majestic balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Is this the person who tweeted me earlier? It's a Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh, oh nice. yes. Yeah. Majestic. Look at that. Whoa! Whoa! Top 41 has donated 120! 120! Uh, Thank you. Just wanted to show some love for a great Dead Reckoning series. Oh, very good. Happy very and good. healthy 2018. Thank Dead Reckoning. You. If you haven't seen it, it's, it's very 12 good. episodes, so it's contained. Only in two hours each. Yeah, Only two, two hours, hours each, each, so go and watch it. It's just 24 hours. It's magnificent. If you, you watch it in a day. Yeah. Yeah. If you want someone to if binge. You, it's Watch 12. It. If you want to, there's one one episode which is sort of a character, character creation. creation and then there's 11 story episodes Just and it's on um, Dungeons and Dragons YouTube page if you want to catch up. It's yeah. really good. Great. Uh, and Varys, uh, since you mentioned your Dead Reckoning dice, Kim, I want to say that I got mine and I absolutely love them. Yeah. Now, if only I had someone to play D&D &D with so that I could use them. Oh well, maybe one day. One we'll day. Check out Discord. 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 Loads of people playing online. Kim. Kev Tim Wincho! Kev Tim. Kev Tim. Welcome back. Just gonna say that yesterday's session I was a player. Yay! I char charge charge yeah. beneath a displacer beast and activated my steam-powered rocket boots oh, uh, to blast perhaps? off. The DM asked me why. I said, that's what Reynard would do for you, Tom. Aww. If you had rocket boots. <laughs> I, yeah. yeah, I'd use them like that all the time. You'd blast them off again. Shit me, these don't eat. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my oh. Jesus! Well, <laughs> Wet my pants. Ah. <laughs> so, first off, Mel Denor has donated a half hundo! Oh, 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 oh. Says, welcome to 2018. Thank you for the entertaining and unique stories you've provided in 2017 and the years, of course, bef before, of course. Um, stay awesome because you are my favorite online D&D group to watch Aww. and to experience. Thank, Thank you. you. And then, Absurdity Matrix with a triple hundo! Triple hundo! Triple hundo! It's keeps going! She is. Ah. Well, like, Kim, read the message. Happy 2018, <laughs> High Rollers. Extra big donation since it's been a while since I could catch you live. Oh, You're goodness. still my highlight of weekly viewing. Keep on rolling. Okay. Rolling, rolling, That's rolling, nuts. rolling. What? Nice. Uh, How does anyone have money after Jingle Jam? Metamani has donated another half hundo. Metamani! Oh. Welcome back! I'm looking forward to the year to come, even if to imply the end of this campaign, and we have to say farewell to our favorite characters because new campaign and new settings. Love you all. I should receive my Dead Reckoning dice on Monday. Woo! Good. Nice. That's Manu again. So That's Manu again, $10. I think I heard Strahd. What? what? Yeah. It's, it's a W A T WAT. I got a chill yeah. when you said Strahd. Yeah. No, wait, it's the room. The Nord House uh, <laughs> donated. Had to donate after the Strahd name drop. More can be said. <laughs> yeah, 666 as well. Nice. And then There's another. Ugh. Sefi1126 wow. donated a half hundo again. again. Oh. Hey guys, spent Thank a few you so months much. catching up and thought the first stream of the year would be too good to watch live and donate. Keep up the good work. And may your grass always be green, except for you, Tom. Trot, you catfish. <laughs> Tom wasn't and even mentioned. Tom <laughs> bring back girly. Yes, I did that. She's dead. Did you not see the polls? She's, she's dead. Still dead. She's dead. Turns out you guys don't Trot. like her as much. Um, <laughs> Kellen22431 donated 777. You guys need all the holy magic you can get. Also, Cam, how hard was it to dye your hair white? I'm considering it, but not sure how hard it would be. Very. Cam doesn't know how to dye his hair white. Just but trot. With trot. Uh, it takes seven hours if you want to do it professionally. <laughs> and a lot of money. Uh, and a lot of money. And so, upkeep. And it hurts your head, unless you've got this weird product that doesn't burn your head. Cool. So, wouldn't recommend. <laughs> But I, I'm going to keep it. The GG Wizard 16 donated. Hello, I'm really enjoying Dungeons and Dragons and I played it a lot and now I'm running four campaigns. Wow. It's a lot of work. Yes, Jeez. it is. That I can barely keep up with this one. one. I know. Yeah. You said the same thing. <laughs> and now kiss. Okay. Double right drink. after this donation. Rambrandt donated a half hundo and a bit. Woo! Thank you wow. so much. Hi Rollers, this is my first time watching live due to my weekly D&D group being at the same exact time, but we wow. cancelled this week. I play a gnome artificer slash wizard 
who rides this construct Hodor style. That's amazing. Shout out to my D&D group, Tom, Nick, Brooke, and Eric. Hello, all of you. Hello. Thank you so much for your donation. Yeah. Uh, I'll Kitty. do one while you can. Uh, Ace of Thorns has donated and said, and now everything is as, as it should be, like an icy hand made of ice. Happy New Year of adventuring to everyone in front of and behind the cameras, furry or otherwise. Hi, Milo. Oh. This I thought he was cat. calling one of us a furry. Um, <laughs> Katie, go on, next one. Um, oh my another gosh. Another half hundo from Seb. Thank you so much. Good to it's have happening. you back, guys. Love the DM 101 episode. By the way, Mark plugged you on the D&D 5th edition group on Facebook. Oh, thank you. Nice. Nice. Awesome. That's, that's really appreciated. Yeah. That stuff yeah, helped massively. Awesome. Yeah, where um, YouTube fails. <laughs> Yeah. The Game Guy 415, <laughs> so Karen made a deal with Dark Power. Damn son, High Roller is starting off 2018 right. Looking forward to the two year anniversary next week. Love you all, hashtag roll on Sunday. And it's Tom's birthday. Two years, and, Tom's and I'll birthday. complete the circle by killing them all. Huh? You can go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Faris, um, and as always, love you guys and all the stuff you do. I especially enjoyed the Jingle Jam specials. I haven't laughed that much in a long time. <laughs> Happy New Year, and keep up the good work. If you haven't seen it, Thank maybe you. watch it. Yeah. <laughs> It's uh, non-canonical. Murmur to you. Love the stream. Imagining the city in the Netflix Castlevania series. Awesome vibes and expecting more spooks to come. Yeah. Basically, I've, I've been imagining Castlevania that. meets Bloodborne yeah. is the style of oh, Freedom. Yeah, nice. that's what I've been kind of... Mm -hmm. cool. Nice. Uh, the Sourist has donated with... Ah! Hello. <laughs> Oh, Kim. Tom, have you had one of these before? I have. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, it's the last one. There we go. Kim's turn. Kim. No, you Kim. Do it. What? Oh. All right. <gasps> Awkward dog boner. <laughs> this week's boner rating! Bloodborne out of 20. Yeah, there you got it. This arc's atmosphere is boner inducing. You're right. A <laughs> raging hard on moment. Let's each do an orgy and see who finishes first. <laughs> uh, erection rejection moment. Oh no. Uh, <laughs> Grunker will use that cape to clean herself after shaving. Oh, it's not that bad. Yeah, I, thought, bad. I, I, I thought, thought it was going in a very different direction <laughs> on Grunker. <laughs> <Bruno. laughs> Hashtag bone on Sunday. Hashtag Yay. bone on Sunday. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so all. much. That was so really much. Nice. Yeah. So many generous donations. Yeah. Yeah. Don't um, miss next week for Tom's birthday. And Tom's birthday. Anniversary. And, and anniversary. And two year. We will be anniversary. back yeah. with lots of exciting actions. Don't forget your big golden balls. <laughs> um, <laughs> so back. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. Thank you guys so much. So glad to be back in 2018 with more high rollers. We're going to keep doing this. It's going on forever. And there's some, <laughs> regardless. Please follow us at High Rollers d, d on Twitter to keep up with when we're doing things and when Kim's making polls and stuff. Because <laughs> she has a great time doing it. She does have a lot. So follow, yeah, do. <laughs> follow us over there to keep up with what we're doing in 2018. And we're hoping it's going to be really yeah. exciting. This campaign is coming to an end. However, Mark has Still got, got some very exciting things. So stay tuned for yeah. information about got that. two years of learning how to do this. So. Yeah. Big plans. Really good. Yeah. Big, big plans. Yeah. See you bye next time. Bye. 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 Bye.